Good evening and welcome to the August 16th, 2012 meeting of the Northampton City Council. I'm Mayor David Narkowitz. Uh, before we get started, I've been asked to once again ask uh, members of the council and those in the audience if you could please uh, put your uh, cellular phones in airplane mode. Um, we're trying to deal with uh, microphone interference uh, and so we're trying to experiment with that. So if you could do that, please. Um, the first item uh, is the public comment session. Uh, we have a list here that I will read from and I'll ask folks to step up to the podium and state your name and address for the record. We have a three minute timer over my shoulder. Um, please uh, adhere to that time so that uh, everyone has a, an equal chance to speak. The first uh, speaker signed up this evening is Tom Pease. Good evening. My name is Tom Pease. I live at 130 Spring Street in Florence. I am currently the Senior Vice Commander at the VFW Post 8006 in Florence. And the reason I'm here tonight, you can see I left some flyers on your desks. I'm in the process of promoting a concert on September the 8th at Look Park, Pines Theatre. Uh, this is the benefit uh, which is near and dear to me is a, uh, the uh, Veterans Memorial, the Vietnam Veterans Memorial Fund also the USO and the NEEDS program, which is the National Education Assistance Dog um, Schooling. It, what it is, these dogs are trained to help our combat soldiers that came back from Iraq and Afghanistan with severe head injuries. Some are deaf, some are blind. So far we've assigned, the, throughout the country, they've assigned 35 dogs to help out these vets and we hope to have one of the dogs there at the concert. Uh, the day will start at uh, 10 o'clock in the morning. We're going to have a car show. So anybody out there that has an antique or a hot rod or whatever is welcome to bring it at 10 o'clock in the morning and the show will go at 3 in the afternoon. Then uh, we'll start selling tickets again at 3 o'clock at the gate there at the Pines Theater. The show will start at 5 o'clock and go till 10. I've lined up along with uh, Full Spectrum Shows and Production Company, we wound up five acts. And out of the five acts, four of them have uh, performed in Las Vegas. And the one that didn't, Union Jack here, is a Beatles band, and they performed at Foxwoods. All these bands are top shelf. Uh, I can't say enough about every single one of them. Some of them are donating some of their time, and other ones are doing at a reduced rate. So. Uh, asking the community and my counselors to come on out and have a good time for a very, very good cause. Elvis will be in the house. <laughs> Roy Orbison will be there. And there's a group out of New York called the Bronx Wanderers. They've done backup for Frankie Valley in the Four Seasons. Uh, his son, the drummer, also plays with the Jersey Boys. So it's a top shelf act. And uh, I hope uh, you can all get out there and enjoy it. It's $20 general admission, $30 for <laughs> reserve seating down front, and it will be rain or shine, and I'll put the tent up myself. <laughs> so, hope to see you there. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Pease. Okay, uh, the uh, next speaker is Adon Donraj. That's right. Hi. Uh, hello, everyone. Hi. So I want, I'm here to speak on support of the right to organize resolution. Uh, last city council meeting in July, it was passed for its first hearing and it's up for a second hearing tonight. I just want to talk very briefly about it. Um, as we all know, this is a, a time of great economic security. I can the details of that. I can personally uh, attest to that from firsthand experience. And I think that um, it's very reasonable uh, way to address the situation when uh, working people uh, can talk about the things that affect their lives uh, with their employers and reach a mutual agreement that benefits everyone. And I believe that this resolution is a first step towards uh, making that uh, process happen. So I'm looking forward to having the resolution passed today. On, on the final note, next Tuesday at 12 noon to 1.30 in Poplary Plaza across from Stop and, Shot on, uh, Stop and Shop on King Street, 
there's going to be a workers' rights committee meeting to uh, remedy, or should I say, to find a way to implement the resolution so we can um, uh, make some real good progress in Northampton in the name of the resolution. So if anyone's available and want to come to that, we'll see you then. Thank you. Thank you very much. The next speaker is uh, Shana Hesselgrave. Good evening. My name is Shana Hesselgrave. I'm a resident at 98 King Street in Northampton. And uh, the concern that I have tonight is that uh, my apartment building does not have any parking available, and so I am using a parking permit from the city. I'm on disability, and the amount of the parking permit at $30 a month is already a hardship for me. And um, so I am concerned in about, uh, <laughs> I'm a little nervous. This is my first time at a city council meeting. <laughs> um, so I'd like to request that some resolution to the situation be uh, created, perhaps a voucher for uh, low-income residents of the city who count on having parking near our residence so that we can live here. Thank you very much. Thank you. The next speaker is Ruth McGrath. My name is Ruth McGrath. I live at 52 Longview Drive in Florence. I'm the secretary of the Ward 6 Association, and I'm here tonight to announce that City Councilor Marianne Labarge and the Ward 6 Association have put in place a neighborhood crime watch training. Training is scheduled for September 15th at 10 a.m., and it's being held at the Fire Station Conference Room, 26 Carlin Drive up in, in Northampton. The streets involved in this training so far are Cal Lane Terrace, Drewson Drive, O'Donnell Drive, Loudville Road, and some parts of Ryan Road. We'll be posting the training on the Ward 6 website. And the address for that is http ward6, spelled out S-I-X, home.org. It's going to be posted shortly. Uh, I've provided all the counselors and, and David a copy of our homepage, um, and it's available for your information. Thank you. Thank you very much. Final person uh, signed up on the list is uh, former city councilor Bill Ames. Thank you, Mayor Narkowitz. <clears throat> I am here tonight to thank the city council very much for your first uh, affirmative vote, first reading affirmative vote on the right to organize. And I would urge you to vote the same way this evening and make that a fully passed resolution. Mr. Mayor, I have over two minutes to go. Could I take the two minutes and use it the next time? <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just losing the two minutes. You're not allowed to yield yourself the balance <laughs> under our rules. <laughs> Thank you, Councilor. Is there anyone else who wishes to speak? Okay, great. Well, then we'll close the public comment session, and I'll ask the clerk to call the roll for the regular meeting. Here. Present. Councilor Dwight. Here. Councilor Freeman Daniel. Here. Councilor Lagarde. Present. Councilor Murphy. Here. Councilor Here. Here. Okay, the first item on your agenda is the approval of minutes of July 12th, 2012. Second. There's been a motion made and seconded. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstained. Abstain. Um, two abstentions. Okay. Okay, uh, next on the agenda are proclamations, resolutions, awards, and recognitions. <coughs> we have before us a second reading on the following resolution. Uh, this is upon the recommendation of City Councilor Maureen Carney, Councilor Paul Spector, and the Northampton Human Rights Commission. It's entitled, Resolution, the Right to Organize. Whereas unions have historically helped to bring economic and social democracy to American society, and whereas the city of Northampton wishes to promote respect for human rights, including workers' freedoms to form unions without employer interference and bargain collectively, and has a history of support for the freedom to form unions and the important public benefit inherent in collective bargaining, 
And whereas the current federal framework under the National Labor Relations Act does not protect the rights of all workers to freely decide whether or not to join a union of their own choosing, and whereas failure to protect freedom to form unions is exacting a heavy economic, social, and political price from workers and communities throughout our city, commonwealth, and nation, including, but not limited to, increased risk to workplace health and safety hazards resulting in increased injuries and illness, suppressed wages, decreased job quality, and worsened economic inequality. And whereas immigrant workers, though they have the legal right to organize, are much more susceptible to labor rights abuses because they do not have equal access to ameliorative relief, and whereas protecting the freedom to form unions is also vital to public health because union members are far more likely than non-union members to enjoy better wages, health benefits, and safer working conditions. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the City Council of Northampton, Massachusetts, one, supports the rights of workers to organize and bargain collectively, two, calls upon employers to A, recognize the rights of those who work for them either directly or indirectly under contractual arrangements, to be treated with dignity, to be paid a living wage, and to work in a healthy, safe, and secure workplace. B, respect that the question to unionize or not is for employees to decide and agree not to express an opinion either pro or con on the merits of unionization. C, abide by their employees' decisions when a majority indicates by card check an election supervised by the NLRB or other neutral body, petition or other public statement, that it supports union representation and engage in collective bargaining to achieve a written agreement without undue delay. D, refrain from abusing National Labor Relations Board elections and appeals by using them as means for delaying or avoiding representation for their employees. And E, refrain from abusing the rights of undocumented immigrant workers. Three, calls upon the United States government to amend the National Labor Relations Act to A, provide for increased and meaningful penalties for the commission of unfair labor practices, B, ensure timely conduct of elections following the filing of representation petitions by referring issues to post-election proceedings whenever possible, and C, ensure that employers and labor organization representatives have equal access to potential <coughs> members of a bargaining unit during representation election campaigns. D, include domestic and agricultural laborers as workers with a legal right to organize. Four, calls upon the Commonwealth to address labor issues on the state level by A, improving state labor laws to provide organizing and collective bargaining rights for workers in our Commonwealth so that contracts must be negotiated within a specific time frame, and B, improving and enforcing state laws against the use of public funds to oppose unions, C, ensuring that state and local government employers continue to collectively bargain with unions and respect pre-existing contracts. Five, calls upon Congress to give its full support to the National Labor Relations Board so it can continue to protect workers in the United States. And be it further resolved that the Human Rights Commission will support attention to workers' human rights in accordance with the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, Article 23, which refers to workers' rights. Each year, the local chapter of the Western Massachusetts Workers' Rights Board shall provide the Human Rights Commission with a list of employers who respond affirmatively to Section 1 and 2 above. The Human Rights Commission shall examine the list and convey it to the Northampton City Council for public announcement. If the Workers' Rights Board finds that any employer has violated their workers' rights to organize and bargain collectively in a repeated manner that is egregious and against the spirit and instructions of this resolution, then the Board shall notify the Human Rights Commission of such findings. The Human Rights Commission may then decide to take any of the following actions. A, notify the employer via letter that the Commission is aware of these claims of conduct. The letter may request a meeting with the employer to discuss how these claims relate to their workers' human rights. B, may request a discussion between the employer and the employees with the Human Rights Commission or other nonpartisan appointed board as the mediator. C, may refer the claimed conduct to the National Labor Relations Board, the <coughs> Commonwealth Relations Board, or other labor rights board or office. Is there a motion to approve on second? Move to approve. Second. Second. Okay, there's been a motion made and seconded, and I open the floor up to debate.
Um, well, as uh, one of the sponsors of the resolution, along with my colleague here, Councillor Spector, and the uh, strong leadership of the Human Rights Commission, um, you know, I spoke at length at the last meeting. Uh, I had the opportunity to bring bring out the um, tercentennial uh, publication for Northampton's 300th anniversary that was published in 1954. Um, a very colorful description in that in that vintage book of the history of the support of workers' rights in the city of Northampton, including the description of uh, many of Northampton citizens basically chasing Pinkerton detectives out of the city. Um, so I, I don't want to go on at length about that, but the point was that we have a long history here in Northampton. I would like to see the city of Northampton follow along with, it, with her sister cities in Springfield, the city of the town of Greenfield, and uh, Pittsfield, who've already passed similar resolutions, and um, really uh, let the Human Rights Commission know that we're in support of the work that they did on this. Very um, in-depth uh, hearings and working and drafting of, of a sound resolution. So I guess I would just reiterate my support and turn it over to other councillors ask for their support. Okay. Does anyone wish to speak on the, uh, on the resolution? Okay. Hearing none, uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Are there any abstentions? So the resolution is adopted unanimously on second reading. Okay. Um, are there any one-minute announcements from the council? Oh, I have a one-minute announcement. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, the reason I'm reading this tonight is because I know we have uh, the possibility that our September 6th meeting may be postponed uh, due to the advice of the Secretary of State. So I have been asked by uh, members of the Lions Club to at least let uh, members of the public know that the Northampton Lions Club is celebrating being Northampton's number one service club for 75 years. And this goes along with the 25 years that the Lions have already been raising funds for helping the needy with sight and hearing problems through their annual antique and classic car show that's being held this year at the Three County Fairgrounds uh, on Fair Street on September 9th. That is then the second Saturday in September. So uh, folks who want to note that in their calendar, the Antique and Classic Car Show at the fairgrounds on September 9th. Thank you very much. Councilor. Yeah, um, I'm, I'm, rather than say this for the end, that the, the planning board is inviting people to come to an open comment session the, the, to talk about zoning changes in urban residential A, B, and C districts, which is about most of the city. So uh, they're having uh, an open comment session Tuesday, September 11th at JFK Middle School, and then also Wednesday, September 12th at the City Council Chambers here, and 7 p.m. for each day. And the residents are welcome to come for informational purposes and also for discussion and comments on, on uh, how they like to see zoning, which has, uh, impacts virtually everybody. And it's usually, and it's usually the pressure and pinch point in most discussions when, when anything comes before the planning board. So here's an opportunity to weigh in and participate in the discussion about how these rules will be drafted and considered and designed. Councilor. Yes, um, you heard our secretary from the Ward Six Association. Our two chairs are on vacation. Um, we have, and I have put in place a neighborhood crime watch which is scheduled for September 15th. We did want to have it at the police station, but because possibly the building is going to be torn down, the old building be and parking would be a problem <laughs> for some of the people on Caroline Terrace. Um, there's a little story about Caroline Terrace. We've had some problems there. We've been working with the police department, so we've connected two other streets. Last time when I had it last year, we had 27 co-captains who were trained 
This time we're hoping we hit like 20. So we're having the assistant district attorney who will be coming from the um, district attorney's office. And we also have another employee from the district attorney's office coming in to talk about elderly abuse. This is something new that we've added on. And we have the police department and the fire department doing the training. So it's gonna be from like two, uh, 10 o'clock in the morning, possibly to three. Okay, are there any other announcements from the council? Okay, um, as we uh, now move out of the one minute announcements, um, I wanted to ask the council if we could take one order out of order. Yeah because we have the city solicitor and we have the city clerk who are both here this evening and I wanted to take that up uh, so that we didn't have them need to stay too late. Um, so uh, this is in city council. This is upon the recommendation of city council president William H. Dwight ordered that a special election be held in Northampton on November 6, 2012 and that the following question be placed on the ballot pursuant to and in accordance with section 447, statute 2012, chapter to be determined, uh, shall, an act, uh, shall an act entitled, quote, an act revising the charter for the city of Northampton, unquote, be accepted, yes or no? Is there a motion? Move to approve. Move to approve. Is there a second? Second. second. Okay. So um, I don't know if, we need to provide any background information on this. I, I think it would be appropriate to explain uh, particularly to, it's been covered well in the press, but I think uh, it wouldn't hurt to amplify and explain the process, why we are actually in a position where we have to call for a special election when when we were kind of expecting it to be done in, on the municipal ballot. Well, you may recall that this council, um, after going through the process of the Charter Review Committee first, and then a Special Act Drafting Committee um, enacted a charter uh, that it then sent to the state legislature. Um, and the intent of that charter was to um, have it approved by the legislature and then put the actual question of adoption of the charter on the state ballot this fall. Um, and that was submitted to the legislature. Um, it, uh, moved through the House of Representatives process, through their committee process, was approved by the House, um, was, was then sent over to the Senate. We were working with Senate Council and Senator Rosenberg's office to move it through that process. Um, and in late July, around about the 20th of July, uh, we received notification that there had been a, uh, a June 1st deadline imposed uh, for the adopt for the adoption and submission of special questions to the Secretary of State's office, uh, and that that deadline uh, was the last date by which any uh, local questions uh, to be approved by the legislature would have to be into the Secretary of State's office in order to make it onto the ballot. Uh, again, this is um, up against uh, a state law which says you have until 60 days prior to the election. Um, We've been given mixed information about the rationale for that. Uh, there's been talk of a new federal law which affects uh, overseas military and the need to uh, prepare the ballot in advance of that. There's been, we've also been told that um, there's a concern about having a second page on the ballot. There's several lengthy state questions and some other questions and they were worried about it continue. So we haven't quite gotten a clear message, but I will say um, I'm, we were not notified directly by the Secretary of State's office of this deadline. There's a bit of uh, um, a contention about that between uh, my office and the Secretary of State's office, which we're trying to resolve just sort of for the record. Um, but what they did advise us uh, through the Secretary of State's office is the, the remedy or the one way to be able to take this question up in November as planned would be to put it on a concurrent special municipal election ballot. Um, so that's the purpose of this. Uh, and we do have the city solicitor here who's been working okay. with the legislature uh, and the Secretary of State's office. And we also have the city clerk here as well. If I may, and, and I'd like to get to questions, but uh, I'd just like to point out the mayor's being very circumspect and very genteel. I, I personally am <laughs> very disappointed in the state, I think, 
whatever reason that they offer for this arbitrary deadline of June 1st, and I believe it is arbitrary, is, is specious, I think, because the fact that the ballot cannot be set because there's no candidates that have been nominated yet in order to qualify for that ballot. To, to set the ballot would mean to s presuppose that certain people would win their nomination in their conventions or would win uh, a primary. So we haven't even had the primary. And so to make the case that the ballot had to be set by June 1st, it's a layout issue on a document in a computer that we, any one of us, could do on our phones in in a moment. And it's it's and then adding insult to injury, making this not only this arbitrary date, but then notifying us post facto after this established deadline. They, we find out in July that it, the deadline was, oh yeah, well, we forgot to tell you it was June 1st, although they now say they, they remembered to tell us, although there's no evidence to that effect. It's, and, and so what it does is it leaves us with, uh, it leaves Wendy's office, the uh, the city clerk's office, with some additional work that we have to do. It's not, a, it's not a, it's an inconvenience. It's not, it's not insurmountable. It is kind of annoying, and it just gives me an opportunity to grouse about the state's insensitivity in these processes. And I and I hope that that, um, and I, I'm pretty sure that uh, we will have we will have an opportunity for the citizens of the city. Uh, who will turn out on a national election, which usually guarantees the largest participation, to address and discuss or in their own mind and vote and decide on essentially what is our community constitution. Arguably, I would say, not to diminish anyone too much, but it is the most important thing on the ballot for people, at least on a local level. And is and so the the fact that the city the, the state in its way just feels that we're just it's either kind of an annoyance for printing or it's a kind of an annoyance for drafting um, I find mild, mildly insulting so that's the end of my rant so just to um, so just uh, just as a quick follow-up so what we've done since learning of this news is we've asked Senator Rose so the it passed in the house as as we put it forward to them to go on the state ballot. We then asked in the Senate, they have amended it in the Senate to now have it read that it will place, be placed on a special municipal ballot on the same day. Um, that actually passed the House today. Um, it's been engrossed in the, uh, passed the Senate rather, been engrossed in the Senate, been sent back over to the House. Um, they have to give their approval to the changes made by the Senate, and our hope is to get it on the governor's desk by the beginning of next week. Uh, for signature so uh, we've kind of adapted to it and several other towns are in the same situation they've also had to adapt their special acts to to fit this new parameter um, so can, can I and I'm sorry just still take advantage of the floor of the uh, may we speak with the city solicitor about the changes that did come out of the Senate I mean I don't know what the breadth and depth of those changes were they we'll have to recognize we'll have to recognize the city solicitor Okay, all those in favor say aye. 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 The changes that came out of the Senate were um, numerous, but most of them were uh, clerical, grammatical, and I believe that the, uh, the Senate has a new uh, legislative drafting manual, and they have run our charter through the legislative drafting manual and reorganized <laughs> phrases. Um, there were about... 50 or to 70 changes made, most of them just language changes. Um, the, uh, the substantive changes that were um, suggested by the Senate um, dealt with uh, how we order the candidates on the ballot for uh, special elections and um, uh, regular city elections that uh, do not have a preliminary election in advance. The charter dealt with how the, uh, uh, the candidates were ordered on the ballot if there were a preliminary election and when that was done. But there was nothing in the charter about elections that aren't preceded by a preliminary election or special elections. And I've just maintained the exact same um, calendar um, for those. Um, and, um, and that was most of what, was, what came out of the Senate um, everything else was just
grammatical technical changes. But they, I will say that on both sides, the counsel for the House and counsel for the Senate went through this with a fine tooth comb. And uh, counsel for the Elections Division in late April and early May, I was communicating with her. She went through this with a fine tooth comb, including the provision that, that, uh, that this would be on the state uh, ballot. And I had several conversations with her and not a word about it being on the state ballot. Not a word about a June 1st deadline. Not a word about right. a June That's 1st deadline. Right, that's picky. Council of Barge. Right. Alan, when this ever came out in the Gazette, I received calls about that, and I couldn't believe, of all people, our city city clerk, okay, didn't, didn't even know about this election, the date of it or the notification of it that she got it and you got it also. When I called our city clerk, Wendy Mosner, I said, you need to read this Gazette because the, the Republican one was okay. This one actually made an accusation where it says, a Caledon spokesman, however, said Friday that the city solicitor and city clerk were both notified in May. And Wendy went and took a look at it she told me, she said, I cannot believe that that's in there. She said, I was never notified. She said, Alan was not notified. I mean, how can they, how can they do this? We'll find out. We'll find out. You know, <laughs> I, Stay tuned. We filed, I know that. We filed I'm tuned and I'm asking so. you, okay, how can they make an accusation that you didn't know as a city solicitor and our city clerk? Um, I, I'm not really going to speculate on what their thought process was. Uh, Something's what, uh, not right. What didn't happen was that on, on May 1st, um, I was not notified, and I've spoken with the, with the clerk, and she was not notified. And we have seen the memorandum that went out from uh, the Elections Division of the Secretary of State's office, and it went to the leadership of, of the House and Senate, and it went to the to the House Committee on uh, Municipalities, but it, it, on its face, it didn't go anywhere else. And, and there was definitely a breakdown in communications at the legislature, uh, at, between the Secretary of State and the legislature and the municipalities. Uh, Thank you, Alan. Councilor Adams. Do, well, <clears throat> do they have to respond to the public records request? Uh, yes. They do? The, the, the uh, Secretary of State is not exempt, even though he's the enforcement agency for the public records law, he's not exempt okay. from it. So. If Thank the you. Secretary of State doesn't respond, we're going to have to appeal to the Secretary of State. Heal <laughs> 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 body. Yeah. <laughs> ten days. Can't you go to the we governor. Made sure that we use the proper language uh, in the ten, ten days. Ten, ten days. days. Yeah. The governor has no jurisdiction over this. This is the secretary of state. This is ridiculous. Well, I'm, I'm sure it will be settled fine. So for the time being, that this is this proposal is to preempt. And actually guarantee that a ballot question will be presented before the citizens of Northampton in a timely fashion at that election. Mm -hmm. And we've seen some movement today. So it, there's, there's good news today that we've at least seen this thing moving its way through. Peristolic? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you can tell. I've got a hand here and a hand here. So, um, Councillor Tacey, then Councillor Friedman. With the amount of work that has gone into this and the scrambling that everybody did to get this done in a timely fashion and get all this put together. I think everybody so far that has spoken has been extremely genteel. I'm going to stop now uh, just because uh, it's pretty infuriating that this could even come about like this. So um, I, I, I deeply appreciate all the work that was done by all these committees and all these people that spent all this time to put this together and have this uh, just I'll stop. Okay. Councillor Freeman Daniels. What's the additional cost that the city will bear for uh, this uh, special municipal election? We don't know precisely. Uh, the city clerk, if someone would move to recognize her, she'd be able to second, second. second it. Okay. All those in favor say aye. 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 Well, we're going to have an additional cost, naturally, for the coding of the ba coding of the machines. Um, we have 22 uh, voting machines, and so there will be an additional cost. It'll be it'll be tagged on with 
the state ballot, but there will be an additional cost uh, for them to add on the question. There will also be an additional cost, naturally, for the ballots. Um, the ballot has to be the same size as the state ballot. When I change, you know, we have to change the opening of the machines to fit the state ballot, so therefore I have to have the municipal ballot the same size. Whether half of it's blank or not, I'm, we have to do that. So I won't know till I receive the summary from um, Alan, uh, just exactly how long the summary is, where I can fax it to my vendor and he can give me a ballpark. The state is requesting and you know that I order as many ballots, the municipal ballots, as the state sends me. Um, only because there was an issue in another community where they had a special election tagged on to a state election and they ran out of ballots at noontime. Um, in 2008, we had you know uh, 16,341 people come out to vote. It was an 81% turnout um, out of 20,337 uh, registered voters in 2008. So you certainly there are there are always odd issues where people are going to be allowed to vote if they've you know if they've. Uh, left the city within a six month period of time and haven't registered any place else so you've always got a plan to make sure that you have enough ballots for those special issues um, naturally there's going to be an additional cost because i have to have a separate check-in and check out at every precinct so there's going to be additional costs for adding on additional workers for that um, and um, that's where I'm going to reach out to the counselors to make sure that the counselors, you know, get out to their constituents and ask them to step up to the plate and help out at the polls. Um, because we always need, you know, um, people to, you know, uh, call me and say that they want to, you know, it's not really volunteer, they get a small stipend, but um, we're always looking for replacements. Um, and just to set the record cl uh, clear for myself, I did not receive a letter or any notification from the state um, at all. Um, the only notification I got was around July 20th when uh, the, uh, Michelle Tassinari from elections called me to tell me that there was not going to be, um, the question was not going on the ballot. And you know, certainly if I had heard, uh, I would have been the first person upstairs to the mayor's office to let him know because you know, if I had a choice of having a special election and having it on a state ballot, what do you think I would do? I would pick you know the state ballot. So, having said that, I mean, we're you know, I'm going to do whatever the council requires me to do to get this election up and running. Um, it's going to be um, extremely hard in my office. Um, you know, in 2008, I had 1,349 people vote absentee. I also had one additional person working in my office, you know, at that point. So we're, you know, we're going to do our best, and you know, there may be things, and you may hear from some of your constituents that they walked in and they just weren't able to get same-day service uh, for city city clerk work. And I mean, something is going to have to give in order to be able to handle, you know, double the amount of work because everything is doubled when you're doing a special election. All the paperwork gets doubled. Everything has to be done separate. So um, now we're going to, you know, and I want to make sure that this election comes off clean. We have no problems like East Long Meadows having right now. And, uh, you know, and this is what my, this is what my staff over in the registrar's office is doing on a daily basis. They're making sure that that voters list is going to be as accurate as possible. Um, they gave me figures today that we have as of today 19,524 registered voters from, um, 2000 from from March of 2000 and um, and uh, six to the present as of today um, we have registered 812 additional voters in the city of Northampton and those are all done they're all data entered it's not something that you can just scan in so all of that information has to be data entered and I mean we've also deleted a thousand a thousand nine people as well because these are people that have moved uh, they've had four years of inactivity and you're by law you have to you know you have to delete them so there's always constant changes going on I suspect by the time you know the deadline for the voter <laughs> registration for the November election is October 17th at 8 o'clock um, I suspect that we'll probably be around that uh, you know that same mark for registered voters Councilor LaBarge Thank you. Um, I know, Wendy, when I called you in reference to the article that was in the paper, mm -hmm. and then you had brought it to my attention about the special election mm -hmm. of how it was going to affect your office, 
with just two on your side mm -hmm. and two on the regi register of voters' mm -hmm. side. And you had great concerns about that and that it was totally impossible to have to do the special election along with the regular election. And then I asked you, how many poll people extra would we need in each precinct? Mm -hmm. And it was... It wasn't, it's, it's, you, need, you need two people and a check-in table and two people on a check-out table because the books are split. And so, you, you know, you're looking at 14 precincts with, you know, uh, four additional, uh, two additional people on, on each book, you know, it's actually four people on, on, on additional books. So, I mean, it's, and some precincts have more, some precincts have more workers where they can probably shift some around and change some of their schedules. Um, it's kind of hard sometimes that they don't like their schedules changed. Um, so it's, it's going to be, you know, it's going to be something shifting in the, you know, we're going to continue to work with it. Uh, yeah, I have to make sure that I can get these additional tables into some of these precincts, like especially down at the senior center, the way it's set up. Adding two additional more tables in that area is going to be tough. I've spoken to the custodian already there. Um, the, some, the schools are not the problem because we have enough room in the schools. It's usually like the senior center. Um, so he's going to work to try to figure out how we're going to get those two additional, you know, those, those additional tables in those precincts. Uh, and all of those precincts, all of those tables, there's going to be additional signage on all of the tables. Um, the first check-in first check-in table is going to be the state election ballot, which is going to be there will be signage there. The next table is going to be the special municipal ballot, and the same for the checkout. Um, people have asked me, well, do you need to go, you know, vote for one and then go back out and stand in line? No, we're not going to do that. We're going to make you, you know, check in twice if you're interested in voting for the, the, you know, either one of them, and then you vote and deposit your ballot. The machine will count the same ballots, whether it's one or two, okay? It does, and it's, the, it's the program. As long as the machine is programmed, the ballots will be counted. How many extra staff are you actually looking at in your office to pull you through election day? And um, the for, my main concern is uh, the phones. You know, making sure that I have somebody that's going to be able to 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 reroute these phone calls that I get on a daily basis, you know, that they're looking for the courthouse, they're looking for, you know, the tax collector, they're looking for the parking clerk, and that takes, an, you know, a tremendous amount of our time, and, you know, if we're at the counter, and then we've got to put them on hold, and then we've got to go back. I mean, if we could get somebody to just deal with that, it would help with the workflow in the office tremendously. I mean, as far as the clerk's work, you know, we're going to be, you know, we're going to have to take requests and we're going to have to do it when we can do it because my main focus is going to be the state election and the special municipal election. That's what's going to be important to make sure that this comes off and comes off correctly. So, how many extra people in the office? I'm going to need I'll, I, I, two extra more. No, I would need one. Phones? No, I would need one person for the phones. And actually, I am able to be able to reach out for, to a couple other people that are willing to come in and work before before work starts and after work starts to help with with processing the absentee ballots. People that have done it before. So, um, that part is pretty much covered. You know. I do know because I had talked with the mayor because I had concerns about your mm -hmm. office talking with you and I know he has talked with mm -hmm. you and knowing with all of us counselors and the mayor I think that we're gonna do a good job on this mm -hmm. and I know that all of us counselors will be there to help you out and we will reach out to our residents I already told you I have names I can give you mm -hmm. Ward six and if they have to float somewhere you know yeah. to make this and relieve the pressure from you, Wendy. Because that's the biggest pressure really is finding put people to work. A big that's, responsibility yeah. for you because you had stated to me that you were very concerned that if something went wrong, the state would be coming oh, yeah. down on you. They will. You. They will absolutely. And that's 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 my main concern is making sure that that does not happen. That there are no there. That all the loopholes are closed. Okay, and that nobody's going to be disenfranchised for voting, and everybody that walks through there is going to have have a ballot. 
okay? They're going to have a choice whether they want to vote for both of them or not. I mean, we can't force a municipal ballot on anyone, so I want to make that clear. They're going to they're going to have to be the ones that step up to the plate and go to the go to the check-in if they want to. That's where your job, all of you people here, come in to advocate for this charter. So, I mean, and make sure that the the general public knows that this is going on. Right. My I have another concern is about educating the public. Mm -hmm. Will your office have something available for the public? I'll only have the summary. I'm, I, as, as an election person, I cannot get involved with educating a voter. They need to know what it's all about before they come in. If they have just questions about how to vote on the ballot, that's one thing. I can help them. Well, how did they have access to the charter? Counselor, I'll, you're going to have to ask. You're going to have to ask the. When the um, governor signs the bill, we're going to then have a. We'll <coughs> put up online. We'll make available at the libraries. We'll make copies okay. available of the finished document. And would um, there be something in her office that people go in? Well, what's what the, what the other hope? That what the legislate? What the legislation calls for is that the city solicitor will write a a summary that will right. describe what it does. That will actually. So we'll also make that available right. to people in right. sort of a short form. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure there'll be sample ballots in your office that'll sure. oh, yeah. that on there. Absolutely. So we'll That's we'll get the word out. And I'm sure that our friends in the fourth estate will will do a lot of reporting on it as well. So Chad. <laughs> <laughs> and and I also think, Mayor, like with the charter committee, I mean all of us who were on the charter charter committee the first time, I mean we spent what a good six months, and then the second committee I mean, everybody did such a great job to make it go as far as it is right now, and it's our job as counselors to move this and get it on the ballot. So I think we'll do okay. And the only other issue that I wanted to bring up to the council is that I have a lot of, um, a lot of overseas ballots um, that um, by law, as uh, Councillor Dwight spoke about, um, the state is required um, to get ballots to the municipalities 45 days before the election. Um, that consists of, uh, and I got the, they send the PDF forms of the ballots to the clerks along with other attachments that go to, and we have to, they have on their form, the federal postcard forms, they can either email, mail, or fax a ballot. And 90% of my ballots out of these, uh, it's at 33 so far out of country, but most of them, all of those 33 were faxed. The issue here with the municipal ballot is I'm not going to be allowed to fax that, I'm not going to be allowed to um, email that ballot to them. The state does not allow me to do a PDF on a municipal ballot. Um, so every one of these, and I've already got 180 applications sitting there waiting just for November. So, and I've got two months to go. So, I mean, you know, by the time I get done, it's, they're going to be like this. So, you know, you, all of those ballots, the municipal ballots are going to have to be mailed because they're not going to allow me to, to PDF them. That's just their, their state law. They just don't allow it. So. No. Uh, Councilor LaBarge, you still have the floor? Thank you, Wendy. You're welcome. And we'll be there to help you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Councillor Tacey and then Councillor Dwight. The math tells me you need 56 additional people. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. And it's and it, I know it's the truth that if I call information and I'm looking at the city of Northampton, they always give me the clerk's office yeah. no matter what I want. It doesn't matter if you're a 411 operator and you're making big money. All you have to do is say call the city clerk's office and they give it. They give the one two two four for everybody. We get a bunch of those calls yeah, to do in the mayor's right. office. Right. One two two yeah. four is for everybody, and it doesn't matter. I mean, they even give it to, to people that are calling other communities, uh, but they'll send give it to the clerk's office, and they'll give you the number for the other town clerk's office. So, so from what date to what date would you be looking for somebody like, for answering phones for helping? Um, actually, forty-five days before the election. For, yeah. So, pr roughly sometime the latter part of September. Forty-five days yeah. before. It's yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Councillor Dwight, uh, and then. Uh, and I should note that actually there is a proposed amendment on this, and it's actually not sponsored yet. So I don't know if, if the uh, if members from the uh, Board of Public Works Joint Committee might be interested in, in offering that as an amendment, but an amendment to have add to the special election. <clears throat> uh, the language would be: Shall the city vote to accept the provisions of? 
Section 6C of Chapter 40 of the General Laws, which authorize cities and towns to appropriate money for the removal of snow and ice from private ways therein open to public use. Um, and if somebody wants to offer that as an amendment, I would accept it for purposes of discussion. So moved. Second. Second. Um, this is done the, the discussion of the amendment, and of course now I'm not chairing, but. Yes. <laughs> okay. So there's been a motion made and seconded uh, to amend this resolution to add a, um, a second question to the special municipal ballot um, under Section 6 of Chapter 40 of the General Laws. Um, I know that this has been a conversation that's been happening in the uh, uh, conference committee, uh, BPW and the City Council, so I wondered if members wanted to speak to that particular question and, and the city solicitor could also answer questions if need be about that uh, well f first I think there'll be enough room on the ballot maybe we have a whole bunch of questions on the ballot since we have a special election anyway I I'm gonna hopefully ask Councillor Adams to speak to the legal part of this but for about eight years uh, I've been on the conference committee and the topic of what do we do about private ways has come up year in and year out there are a number of streets in Northampton. I forget the number. It's somewhere around 60 or something. It's 40 right? something. 40 something. But that, that the city actually has been doing, has been plowing on, has been taking care of those roads as if they were public ways. A few years ago, Councilor Adams, correct me if I'm wrong, but a few years ago there was a court case which came down saying that the city could not provide services for for private ways am i interpreting that correctly um and so we've been discussing this for quite a while in committee on what do we do and and there are many people living on those streets paying property tax who would be pretty shocked and suddenly find out our street was not a public way because it operated as a public way um, for the whole time and so therefore that's where the background of this has come which is what do we do about these streets and we've needed to do something about them so i'm just giving you the background on that and hopefully city solicitor yeah, i think the city solicitor explain this could probably yeah i would ask the city solicitor to address this he had been asked uh, we had asked him to to do some research on this for the dpw and prepared the, some information which sort of started this conversation so the issue came up, uh, came to a fore actually in 2005 with a letter from the in Office of the Inspector General to, actually it was to the town of Wellfleet, but it made its way around among the municipal bar. Um, and um, it's quite clear that there's been a statute on the books, it remains on the books, that requires uh, that in order for cities and towns to plow private ways, um, first of all, the private way has to be open to public use. And number two, there has to be a, um, question on a ballot uh, that passes and this is the language of the question and uh, you are correct that there are streets that uh, that for all intents and purposes appear to be public ways they look like every, like every other public way but they have never been accepted um, and there are some um, streets on the list that do not appear to be public ways and I think the DPW intends to uh, address those differently Councilor. Well, I read it as that the use of public funds on a private way is prohibited. Is that correct? Without it's the, the uh, of this, it's the appropriation of funds. The appropriation is prohibited. Right. Correct. Okay. And it's prohibited unless uh, voted by uh, on, by the, the voters yeah. of the city. Okay. So if we're going to continue, we actually have to. We have to have passed this. Um, we, we've gotten this far, and I think it's in everybody's interest to actually dot the I's and cross the T's. And in order to continue, we ought to uh, put this to the voters. And um, the other option, of course, is to go through the process of accepting these ways as public ways. And I think that the DPW has recognized that it would probably cost more to uh, go through the process of accepting them than um, just continuing. Uh, so treat them as public ways for the purpose of plowing. So this, so this is, this is a stopgap. This is a, merely a little bridge to get us through. No, no. no the, this, this is off. Particular. Well, this is for snow and ice. Because we're going to continue on with the plowing of the streets. Correct. Because we're looking at, ten to maybe twenty thousand dollars, per street for engineering. 
f costs to accept each of these. So this was so this is this is the lesser of two evils. Just to continue on and maybe spend a certain percentage of money to plow snow. Correct. That's all we're talking about is is snow and ice. That's all we're talking about. We're not talking about any other maintenance of any other ways. Just snow and ice. And then further on down the line, there's another subset 25. C, I think, further down talks about liability issues. Correct. Um, if we plow these, um, do we accept the liability issue? We don't accept them as public ways, so they are not public ways. So anytime that uh, uh, there's no defect in the public way, because they're not public ways. Yeah. I'm having a hard time reading. I mean, I'm not a lawyer, so I, I try to read through there, and it talks about whether or not uh, the streets were in a condition that they could be traveled on. Uh, and if something should happen, who's responsible? Uh, it's further on. It, 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 it's in the. the whole book book. It, it's in the the book, the MGL. I just I just kind of curious as to who's. These are not public ways, so they're not our responsibility. Although they some of them appear to be public ways, but they're not, and so they're yeah. not our responsibility. Um, and the only responsibility we're taking on by doing this is plowing, and sanding. Councilor. Yes. So that is why we have to put it on the ballot? I that mean, is why. What would well, happen if we didn't put it on the ballot? You're still plowing. It's, it's well, getting confusing. Well, well. You're still plowing snow on private streets. So if it didn't go on the ballot. <laughs> we would be susceptible to um, certain lawsuits that could try and prevent us from, from uh, appropriating spending money plowing private ways. Now, if people voted against this, then what's next? Then those who live on private ways are going to have to find a private way of plowing their streets. Okay, so they would be responsible for plowing them. Right, and I think that a lot of people would be very surprised to learn that their streets are private. Right. Okay. Uh, Thank you. I, I had Councillor Specter waiting and then Councillor Adams. Go ahead. So I yield to Councillor. Oh, thank you. So taking them as public ways would be more expensive and potentially open us up to liability issues like Drivers would could go to then take uh, if they had if they had um, damages to their vehicles, for example, on those streets, they could then come to claims, uh, make a claim with the ordinance committee. Whereas now we could, if this passed, we could plow them with city money, but we're still exempt from liability. Is that right? Well, councilor, um, to the first part of your question, let me answer the first part of your question. Um, the streets run the gamut from things that look like driveways to things that look like every other city street. And so some of the streets would be very easy to accept, and some of them would be more difficult. Because um, the, the real expense is creating a plan. Um, the engineering for a lot of these streets is Surveying. not what we need. We need to have a plan of the street. And so some of these streets would have to have plans drawn. So we'd have to have a survey, go out and survey the street and, and designate exactly what we're accepting. Um, and so um, it runs the gamut, but you are correct that these are not public ways, and so we're not responsible for them. All we're doing is, is taking on the ability to appropriate money and, and plow these ways. And um, I think the DPW board has made a determination for itself that, at least in the short run, it would be less expensive to just continue to plow these streets, which constitute a very small percentage of the streets, um, as opposed to trying to do plans on a lot of these streets and, and accept them. When, when did that statute pass that you said it? 2005? Five. Was it? 2005. No, that was the, 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 the statute the, predates that. Um, I just don't know what that was I the have case. date on the statute. Oh, that was the case. For quite some time. That was the letter to Wellfleet. That was a letter. That was a letter from the Inspector General's office in 2005, so this thing's been around for at least 10 years or more. And I'm assuming it's fair to say that there's probably a lot of communities that aren't complying with it. A lot. Yeah. So it's one of these laws that probably... Yeah. So. Well, yeah, we have not been complying with it for a lot of years. And the, the, there, are, I, I would say a good 20 of these streets are the streets that people are probably going to be surprised to learn because they look just like any other street. So our, our, since this is now opened up, we really have to move forward and do something. I think it is dramatically different cost if we go ahead and 
approve through the DPW and, and ask for acceptance of each street. I mean, I think the figure of plowing these streets, we took a percentage of the budget yesterday, I think it was about $20,000, a little less. 2%. Whereas that could be what one street might cost us. So, you know, down the road, because you're going to have to do a survey, you're going to have to, and yet I believe there's going to be some other legal stuff you're going to have to do with people living on that street. What happens if somebody on the street says, well, I don't want it to be a public way. So we're going to run into, we could run into a number of issues. There's no question. Um, you know, and having your time paid for, you know, a lot of work for you. If that were to happen, we're going to have to look at what do we do about that. So this, I think, is a, as, as someone who's been involved in this conversation for a few years now, this sounds to me, and I would hope one of the things I want to say is that all the counselors go out and give their support to this, because if it weren't to pass, then we're back to, well, what are we going to do? We could just ignore it after we've now opened this up and actually said, look, we've got a problem, we're doing something that we're not supposed to be doing legally, I think then we're going to have to resolve this some way or another, and it could then cost us a lot more money, take a lot more time. So I hope everybody on the council understands that and will tell their constituents to please support this. Back to Councilor Adams. So if this passes, um, who specifically will determine what then is not open to public use? What are the, what are the ways left that are not open to public use, and, and those have to be discontinued any, in any event, right? Even I, I think there are going to be a number of these ways where the DPW is going to have to send them a letter in advance of this winter to tell them that they're going to need to find an alternate way to, to plow their driveway. Does the law state if that's done by BPW board vote or by the director or some? Um, this has all been at the DPW level, and I was assuming that it would be done by DPW. Their board of directors? Yes, the, the board. Councilor Tacey. It, it, it's pretty apparent. I mean, I've watched the DPW, well, the Board of Public Works, wrestle with this for a dozen years or better. Um, Hillcrest, case in point. Beautiful street. Who the heck ever would have thought that it was never accepted? I mean, it's in Florence. It's 1969 or some such thing as that. Um, Gilrain Terrace has been there for 60 years. It was just accepted a few years ago. Owaga Avenue. Owaga Avenue. Yep. They're all over the city, and, and, but there are some that are really not city, that really need some upgrades before they. So anyway, um, and I just wonder just exactly how far this takes us into um, the full-blown acceptance of all <laughs> streets and private ways, and like you had said, they don't want to be a public way. A sewer main or a water main or so anyway. Councilor Freeman Daniels. So this just I want to clarify something here. Uh, so far as I can tell, this off this allows the city to appropriate funds for plowing private ways. It does not obligate the city to correct and plow and all the private ways in the city. Correct. And it and only those private ways that are open to public use. So I will describe that when um, the DPW director and the chair of the board went out to look at some of these roads. They they were told to get off my property right. by some of the landowners. And so there's some easy ones that we could eliminate from the list pretty simply because they're obviously not public ways. They're not open to public use and they're not eligible to be plowed by the city. Um, and then there are the ones like Hillcrest and Owaga that look like cities, like public ways and, and um, probably stay on the list. Thank you. Councillor Dwight. Though one of the challenges for some, um, uh, some uh, particular private ways, and one that uh, Council Freeman Daniels represents, in fact, is not so much the plowing, it's the cars that are on the street. Does this, by dint of this vote, authorize, allow the, pool, the city to ticket in tow? No. So the, the, this, the problem, that problem, the physical problem, will remain. And, yes. and so this is not a solution to that. This is only those a solution problems. to appropriating and spending money on private ways because they're not right. public property. My, my one concern about this amendment, and, and I've talked with uh, um, the chair of the BPW, among others, that is that the, this question is rather rudimentary. It is, if someone sees this on the ballot, it's not really going to make much sense to folks, and they're not going to, it's going to be pretty difficult. <laughs> You're going to come to this question. You're going to go. I don't know what the hell this means, right. and and um, it might, by dint of the fact that it's not 
no one really knows what it is. They either don't vote on it or they vote against it. And if it loses, as you point out, then we have, and as actually, as, as Council Spector has indicated, we have now acknowledged that we recognize that we're in violation. And that at that point, we are left scrambling, the Board of Public Works is left scrambling, trying to figure out how we're going to, how we're going to correct this problem. I understand that this is an appeal, an appealing prospect to try and do it this way, but I also think it, it's uncorked the genie's bottle. Councilor Freeman Daniels and Councilor Spector. I, uh, I concur uh, with that sentiment, but I think it, the bottle's already uncorked. <laughs> uh, we've, we've already, we've, the cities of Northampton's been breaking the law for over a dozen years now. So uh, it, we either continue to break the law, and now that everybody knows about it, we could be subject to a lawsuit that we uh, inappropriately spent funds, uh, or we can ask the voters to approve it. <coughs> um, if they don't approve it, then we're going to do what we should have done anyway, which is not plow those private streets. We, I have Councilor Spector and Councilor, but Councilor Just so you know, Councilor th Spector. this ballot question uh, <laughs> came about as a way, it, it seemed like a good answer. It, it didn't, it only came about recently that we even found this to be true. So in the years we've been having this, these discussions, we have been looking at a variety of ways of doing this, including prioritizing and probably a lot of, Mm -hmm. A lot fewer streets would be, you know, would end up getting plowed because the cost of each street becoming a, a public street and being accepted. So we have been looking at a whole system of prioritizing, and there may be streets where there are a couple of residences where they would just have to, you know, they may not end up being uh, accepted as a public way. So it's not like we're we would be starting all over again. We'd be actually be back to what we are looking at, which we've been avoiding for quite a while which is to prioritize this and begin to educate people. So again, I just hope counselors, it's going to be up to counselors to get the word out on what this is. Councilor Carney. Um, <clears throat> I'm actually someone who found out that um, I live on a, a <laughs> private way. I had no idea that my, my house was on a private way according to the uh, Board of Public Works, well, not the Department of Public Works chief. And um, neither do any of the residents on Church Street know that, I mean, I haven't gone out and told them. So I'm, I'm sure that most residents on these so-called private ways have assumed that the property that they bought was on a public way. Uh, public drives, uh, hundreds of cars drive through my street to go out onto King Street every day. And um, I think that there would be a, if if the outcome were as Councilor Freeman Daniel said, we just can stop plowing those streets, you would have a pretty a loud yes. uh, outcry from a number of residents demanding immediate acceptance of streets, um, or else an abatement of their property taxes if they're mm -hmm. not going to be getting their streets uh, plowed. So you know, I really think that uh, what might work in this case is people are people. Are not stupid, and so even though the uh, the language is kind of confusing, it wouldn't hurt to have a ra you know a, a small two or three sentence explanation. I know we talked about that on previous uh, discussions in the ballot. It, I mean, it's a, I don't know why we can't. Let's ask if that can be uh, on the ballot, just a two or three sentence explanation yes, about what this means. We certainly draft a short summary. I yeah. think we have room on the ballot. You know, <laughs> one sentence, um, two yeah. sentence, just say many streets have always been uh, considered public ways or, you know, for hundreds of years have been used as such. Uh, this is a way to, I, I don't understand why that would be a problem. Councilor. Can we do that? I know sometimes state law is very specific about what we can ask and it's and it's limited and and I, I agree I, I hope this does pass but we also have to be careful about not doing something that's a that's a that's an argument in support of it when we're asking the whole city to vote on it so. um, this is a municipal election and uh, um, um, well at a regular city election it says so a special election wouldn't qualify if it would have, so would have this ballot qualify as a regular city election? No, it's a special. This is a special. So this so, is not a regular city election. So this can't go on. I don't think so. All right, so let's maybe we shouldn't. 
<laughs> just a point of order then um, if if is if it's possible to it, it, find everything else. So. <laughs> yes. if you, but if you were research this and Don't find out that it, it could qualify for this ballot is it possible to include it as an amendment on the second reading I don't see why not. Okay. Well, then I, I would recommend that we right now um, cons not consider this uh, as as an amendment uh, or table it as an amendment. And should it be determined that it could show up on a special election? So we haven't voted on the amendment. No. So the amendment's been made and seconded. So it's been made and seconded for purposes. Makers could withdraw it. It could be right. withdrawn. Withdrawn or. But I would recommend that instead of tabling. So that we could do a little more research. Okay. Second, I think I seconded it. Uh, Councilor Spector moved oh, yeah. uh, it. Yeah, you got yeah. to it. Yeah, I'll withdraw it. Can, okay. I'll, I'll withdraw it. Wait. So, so there's. You withdrew it. Withdraw your second. Withdraw your second. I'll second. Point of, point of information. So there's no way to get a ballot at this stage to get any other question on the ballot in any way, shape, or form. On this? Um, Next year. Next year is at a regular city election because we're having a regular city election I next year. And just okay. plow this one. <laughs> uh, it's fine with me. So it sounds like that again. This is we. This was something we were just told about today. Mm -hmm. that this question was put forward. So we've just seen this today, and you're now researching it on the fly. So yeah. Um, on so the camera. <laughs> so on camera. So we're, we we. Do you have a question, Councilor? Well, we all also now know and have very publicly address that this is illegal to do this. <laughs> so if we're going to postpone it for a year, every time we plow these streets for this winter, it's going to be illegal. Exactly. I don't get this. <laughs> well, it's, 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 um, so people are paying well, for their streets. Well, what's happened people. is we've, we've uh, we, what we should be doing is accepting the law and then, then making a definitive <laughs> appropriation for private ways. And we haven't been doing that. We've been appropriating money for yeah. all the ways that we plow and you're supposed to segregate them by public ways and private ways. But you can only do that if you accept this law. So you're correct. Um, we're continuing a practice that yes. is not uh, in keeping with the law. But I'd be willing to bet, and I'm hoping that um, Chad will do some research on this, that maybe <laughs> other communities around us that are doing the same thing. Well, well I, would, I, would, I would also say that, that we can also illustrate by virtue of this proposed ballot change a good faith effort towards trying to rectify it. And I'm sure the Secretary of State's office wouldn't hold any grudges and consider it. Oh, <laughs> <no>. <laughs> Secretary is not the enforcement agent. Oh, this is, oh excellent. So. <laughs> <laughs> Counselor. The, uh, and it, it's important, too, that there's not, DPW isn't looking for more money, because yeah. it's just to continue yeah. what they've been doing. It's not as though we're That's looking for, to reburden the taxpayer or something on this it's just something that we've always done and in that back to my point is where does it where do we go after this well that's right now the question is different which yeah, is we need probably like this that. isn't even going to be on the ballot but we have a whole year then to educate people but it's important that people know that they're not looking for more money to do this it's just something we status quo Council Barge. Right. If this ends up on the ballot, it can't. It's not. It's not going to. We've just been told by the secretary. We just were told the council council. we so can't. Oh, we can't. Next year. Yes. Not in November. This is uh, you're from now. November. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Gosh. I'd like to move the question. Let's oh. move it. I'll second it. <laughs> okay. So we're back to now the original um, order. And I'll just it's brief. I'll just review it again. Ordered that a special election be held in Northampton on November 6, 2012, and that the following question be placed on the ballot pursuant to and in accordance with um, the, and we'll be asking the council to amend it on second reading to put the actual chapter once this is signed into law. The question would be, shall an act entitled, an act revising the charter for the city of Northampton be accepted, yes or no? So. Um, all those in favor of calling this special election say aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? Okay, so it is adopted on first reading. Okay. Thank you both uh, for coming. That was fun. Goodness. On the journey. Uh, Joe. <laughs> okay, so now we're moving back to the regular agenda. Uh, we're moving back to uh, the appointments, uh, elections, and public hearings portion of the agenda. The first uh, order under appointments, we have a request. This is from uh, Captain Conkus, and this is for the appointment of Michael R. Patinode 
as a special police officer. Um, and this reads, uh, request that Michael R. Patton be appointed a special police officer at the August 16, 2012 City Council meeting to take effect August 26. Uh, Michael Patton is scheduled to retire on August 25th after 32 years of distinguished service. However, he would like to continue to serve the city and its department in the capacity of a special police officer after his retirement. So I would entertain a motion to appoint Michael R. Patton as a Move to approve. Okay, there's been a motion made and seconded. Are there any questions or discussions about this appointment? Okay, hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Uh, the appointment is approved. Uh, next, we have a couple of um, one is a reappointment uh, to uh, the Committee on Disabilities. Uh, this is um, for Susan McCreary, uh, 14 Dewey Court. Um, she's a current member, and uh, this would be a reappointment of her to a term expiring June 2015. Yes, I would like to um, suspend Rule 30 and do not refer this to committees. Okay. There's um, no motion made. We just have to get a second. Yes. Second. Okay. Second. All those in favor aye. say aye. 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 Okay. Um, Susan's been on our committee for quite a long time. I would say maybe 14, 15 years, somewhere around that. She is excellent with her attendance. She is very active on the Committee on Disabilities. So I am so happy that she's reapplied to be back on it. So I'll um, take that as a motion to appoint. Yes. And is there a second? Second. Okay. So um, any discussion about this uh, reappointment of uh, Susan McCreary? Okay. Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. So she has been reappointed. Next, we have a new appointment to the Council on Aging, which will require uh, your referral to your Committee on Appointments and Evaluations. This is an appointment of James P. Spencer of 12 Mill Street in Florence. Uh, he would be re uh, replacing a uh, res resigned member um, and would be filling the term to expire 2015. So moved. Okay. Second. Second. Okay. So all those in, uh, there's been a motion made and second. You have a question. I just want to thank Hank Kowalski for all his years of serving. Oh, yes. Good move. Um, so this would be a motion to refer to uh, your committee on uh, appointments and evaluations. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. We also have a late file appointment. Uh, this came to us. Um, from the Committee on Appointments and Evaluations and would require a suspension of Rule 38. To suspend Rule 38. Second. Okay, all those in favor of suspending rules say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. So uh, this would be um, uh, the appointment uh, to the Conservation Commission of Tricia L. McGovern. Uh, she would uh, filling a vacancy, a term to expire uh, March of 2015. For a motion to approve the appointment. So, so move. Second. Okay. Got a motion made and second. Um, does anyone from the committee uh, wish to speak about um, Ms. McGovern? Yeah. The committee, we did not interview Ms. McGovern, so we don't have a recommendation from the committee one way or another. I personally have read this. Each member of the committee um, went over the application and had the opportunity, I don't know if other members did this, to call Ms. McGovern and speak with her. But um, I read the application. I think this is great that she's willing to serve, and so I personally support that. The committee, again, does not have its own recommendation. I hope all the counselors uh, read um, Ms. McGovern's application because it's great, and I think this will be a great addition to that committee. Do we have a copy of this? Uh, yes, it was at the last meeting um, when it was. Oh, right. Right. That's right. Thank you. Thank you. And, uh, and I will say that I know Ms. McGovern, uh, when we discussed her wanting to be appointed, she attended several times right. uh, meetings and she's continued to attend the meetings um, since then. Um, and was very interested in, and excited about serving. So, just another uh, side piece on this in general. I would encourage counselors at the meeting, even if they're referred, if you could read the application then, because there can be times when we don't get to interview the applicant and might come in with the same thing, which is we, we, we're just in the same boat you guys are, which is we just have the application. So um, 
just when it comes through on the referral, if you could do that, that would be great. So is there any um, further discussion on this appointment? Oh, Councilor. Yeah, um, I'm trying a hard time pulling up her application from the last meeting, um, but uh, I did read it, if I recall. It was uh, a, uh, it was two pages, I think, right? It was the original application and a separate page attached to it. Yep. Uh, and I was I was also impressed by the, by the application. Um, I, uh, I do question, though, the, her appointment to the Conservation Commission um, versus other other possible uh, boards or committees. Um, so I, I, uh, I'm going to abstain, but uh, I think she'd be she'd be a good asset um, as a member of a multiple member body. Um, but I can't uh, say why the Conservation Commission over perhaps the Recreation Commission or something like that. Thank you. Okay. I'd be happy if anyone wants to ask me a question about that. I'd be happy to yes. you know, rationale. I'd like to ask you that. I'd like to ask. Um, and that is, uh, uh, we have several folks on the Conservation Commission who are you know, practitioners. They're either, you know, wildlife or, mm -hmm. or some of them actually do wetlands analysis. So we have a lot of practitioners. What I appreciated about Ms. McGovern, first of all, she's a very smart person. She's an oncology nurse. She's, you know, has a science background she's uh, and she's very interested in nature she lives right behind a nature um, preserve in, in Ward 6 um, and she so I, I felt that it w it's good to have folks that may not be experts in the field but have an interest in it and are smart and can learn the regulations and can uh, so that was kind of my rationale for wanting to have not only some of the experts we have but also just having regular citizens uh, lay people who um, can also be there to provide that that fuller perspective on the committee. So that was the rationale. Right. A question. Is this the committee actually requested by Ms. McGovern? Yes, she, she that's that's actually on the form. Yeah, she requested yes. um, she was interested in in one or two committees. There weren't one of them I believe was transportation and parking, but there weren't any citizen openings on that one. Mm -hmm. And I can't remember the other one, but uh, but this was one of the ones that she had indicated an interest in. Okay. And before I appointed her, I we she agreed to attend several of the uh, of the meetings to understand what it was that the, that the body and she attended and and said she was still interested so yeah thank you Councilor. she lives in ward seven off of ryan road sorry about that yeah the other side of ryan road sorry about that yeah avis is it off of yeah avis, sir. she lives right at the back of avis oh, sir. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. okay any other discussion on this okay um all those in favor then of this appointment say aye aye, aye. aye. opposed any abstentions okay. Uh, so the next item under um, this section of your agenda is a poll petition. Uh, this is a poll petition uh, for National Grid and Verizon New England uh, requests permissions to locate poles, wires, and fixtures. Um, I need to ask for a motion to open the poll petition hearing. Move to open the poll. Second. Okay. There's been a motion made and seconded. Uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Uh, and I would ask a representative. I see we have a representative from National Grid here. If you could just step forward and identify yourself um, yes. and describe the project for us. Okay. Lisa Jasinski with National Grid, and we are requesting permission to set a poll, actually two polls on Holly Street. The first um, is a poll that's going to be what we would call a mid-span poll between the existing polls one and two. And the second is actually a relocation of a pole. There is a pole across the street from pole one. We use as, um, we, we, we call it a stub pole. It's for supporting purposes of existing equipment. And the reason um, <coughs> we're requesting this, this existing pole is um, it's in order to, um, to upgrade the service to building number 11 on Bridge Street and to accommodate the renovations to the building. <laughs> <clears throat> the additional pole is actually going to be used to relocate a th uh, transformer bank that's on pole one now, and that pole one will become a, a, a junction pole to service of number 11 Bridge Street. We'll have to bring a three <coughs> primary across the street, or we need to get it over there, and there's, it's very limited in that area where we can do that. Um, <coughs> I think that that's, I, I, the, the 
pull one dash eighty four, which is be, which is on the side of Holly, that number eleven <laughs> street is on that the one that we use for supporting purposes. We want to move that out of um, the tree. It's it's really right under the tree that would, that would get chopped up pretty well if we didn't move it over about fifteen feet to provide the service. to Helen, Tacy, you had a question. This is all in conjunction with the renovation. It is. It is. It's all part of the renovation. Okay. It is. Did you have any other questions, Councilor? Is there a driveway, something going through there? Is there going to be an opening? There, there is. Where, where I have marked out for the pool on the side of, um, in, in regards to the, I'm trying to think about that, would it be on the side that number 11 Bridge Street is on? There's an opening there that's going to be closed in the renovations. Mr. Trump shows here. Yeah, I have permission to the recognize the. Uh, Bill Trumpshaw. Bill Trumpshaw, please. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, I would ask are there any other folks who would like to speak in favor or in opposition to this particular uh, petition? Um, okay. Hearing none. Um, any other questions from the council about this? If not, I would um, entertain a motion to close the poll petition hearing. So moved. Move to close it. Second. Okay. All those <coughs> in favor of closing the petition poll petition hearing, say aye. 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 Opposed. <coughs> okay. So the hearing is closed. And so before you then is the uh, is the, the petition um, with the standard conditions that the city places on these uh, poll locations. Uh, and I would ask all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? <coughs> Any abstentions? Okay. So the full uh, petition request is approved. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Just by your last name, please. <laughs> <laughs> it's an easy to spell Polish name. So, uh, so uh, the next item on the agenda is we will uh, recess the regular meeting and move into the finance committee. And I will ask the clerk to call the roll of <coughs> the finance committee. Present. Present. Here. Council Here. Present. Here. Present. Here. Here. Okay. So on the uh, finance agenda, we have several financial orders. Um, and uh, I will reference you to the uh, Finance director's memorandum in which she goes through many of these, uh, goes through the rationale for many of these orders, but we can uh, recognize her as we go through them. The <coughs> first order is upon the recommendation of the Board of Public Works, uh, ordered that whereas Mr. Timothy Van Epps has offered to <coughs> donate a gift of $5,000 for the purpose of construction of two speed humps on Union Street, and whereas the Northampton Board of, Board of Public Works has agreed that the construction of said speed humps will enhance public safety, and whereas the permission of the Northampton City Council is required by Massachusetts General Law, Chapter 44, Section 53A, now therefore be it ordered that the City Northampton City Council approves the acceptance of the gift of Mr. Timothy Van Epps for the purpose of constructing speed humps on Union Street. In the event that the project costs less than $5,000, <coughs> the balance will be returned to the donor. Is there a motion to approve on first reading? Move to approve. Uh, in Finance Committee, rather. Move to approve. Okay. Second. Second. Okay, so um, I don't know if uh, the board just voted on this <coughs> last night. I don't know if anyone on uh, Transportation and Parking, the chair, wants to address there. this. Yeah. I was there for the, uh, the vote. It was. Um, there was a lot of discussion about the acceptance of the gift, and the, the Board of Public Works really kicked it around. There was a lot of thought involved, um, and it didn't come, the vote, the approval didn't come easy, or the recommendation out of the board. It was actually, it was a, it was a three votes in favor, and there were three abstentions, which is not an approval. Uh, it didn't meet a majority. So the, uh, the chair voted, and it then became four to four votes in favor and three still three abstentions. The discussion was around whether or not 
to accept a gift from the private sector for something that government should have been doing or should be responsible to do, such as installing the speed bump, the, the speed humps. So that was the discussion. It went on for quite a while. Quite a while. Um, there was good arguments made on, on both points, but it did come out with a recommendation um, that they, they did approve it. Um, <clears throat> the discussion was really around whether or not a neighborhood or an individual could afford to do something in a neighborhood where maybe something else was needed in a different neighborhood, but they couldn't they couldn't afford it or it wasn't funding wasn't available through the city. So it was a I won't say it was a lively discussion, but it was it was um, it was pretty sensitive and, and sympathetic to all all the parties and um, but realizing the reality is that there would if somebody is going to help you or help the city do something that they could not ordinarily have done. Um, we're at that point now. We're at that point where funding is is short everywhere, and we're going to have that discussion at a bigger level on the 13th and the 27th <laughs> for a different thing. So anyway, um, it was uh, it was informative, and it was kicked around a lot. And uh, the uh, I think the board really had due diligence, and it it was a split decision. So um, I int I intend to support it. Um, and before I recognize you, Councilor, I just want to note that uh, Laura Hansen, who's the EBW's traffic engineer, is here if there are specific questions about these uh, these uh, traffic calming devices. Councilor Yes, March. I also attended that meeting last night, and I also had Mimi Rogers, who spoke um, highly against what was being done with that. And she felt that it would be great, like donating it to recreation or the schools am I gonna support something like this I'm having a hard time with it but because he is donating that money sometimes it's a little difficult to say to somebody you know oh my god look what you're doing we thank you for that but I also find it very hard for people who cannot afford to do that and they're on a list and waiting for quite a long time to have their streets either you reconstructed or whatever has to to be done with it in ward six we've been waiting going on seven and a half years for doing something to make the intersection i'm using that as an example of ryan road and um, florence road seven years there's no money if we had somebody on our ward to say here, Consular and everybody, here's $75,000, whatever, that would be great. But we do not have that kind of money where people can do that. So I think it does kind of like cause a problem here with people who do have money can afford it and people who don't have money can't, but they're still waiting to have it done. I will support it because he is giving the money, but I don't like the idea. I also heard the Board of Public Works last night, and they really were having a hard time with it. And I know Mimi Rogers taped it. There was concerns that they need to really look at this very carefully. Um, Councillor Dwight, and then back. I, I, it seems to me that if, if this is, I, I personally, I'd be really surprised if this becomes a trend, but if it were that there should be something in place, it's basically a priority list and not based on cost, but based on need, and um, the fact that, and I, I think something like that does exist. Um, and then someone gets to leapfrog it over a little bit because there's they're providing funding for it. This is not too dissimilar to when we got stimulus money, we were able to um, improve Jackson Street because the project was ready and the stimulus money became available. Unfortunately, on a larger philosophical level, it's, it's kind of like, um, a wealthy person getting a heart when a poor person is not allowed to get one because they can't afford one. They can't jump ahead of the line. That's how critical it is. That's true. And the fact that, and I, I share the discomfort of how, you know, administering uh, municipal services based on individuals, even calling upon individuals to go to, and their generosity to go beyond that, uh, paying their taxes and participating in, 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 in the city's governance. It's 
<laughs> I understand the impetus. If you have if you have the means to help facilitate the establishment of a system that you want and you have you're generous enough to supply the money, I think that's all to the good. Unfortunately I don't think I, I don't think that's the way to run a city. I don't think that's the way to run city services. It's like and, and and listen, this is a statewide issue. This is not I mean the school systems are paid for by property taxes, so obviously the wealthier communities enjoy better school systems where the poor communities do not. And so the failure actually isn't isn't the BPW or the transportation board. I mean, they, they're deeply conflicted with these issues, and, or nor the mayors. I think the failure is, is in, in, in structural that speaks to a larger question. So in that respect, I mean, I would accept this at the, at the same, at, with this, as Council Labard said, with the same sense of gratitude, but at the same time, the same sense of despair. That that what this does is kind of uh, promotes the best for the the people who can afford it and uh, whatever we can muster. Because those those people waiting in poorer neighborhoods are not waiting because they're poor, uh, that they don't have the means. They're waiting because we don't we don't have the means to do it. And I think that distinction is very important to make as we as we consider this vote. Um, I had Councillor Tacey waiting, and then Councillor Freeman. Davis. There's um, another. There was a safety issue to an aspect of it, uh, with the Bridge Street School being into Union Street. Um, and even consideration was all, Laura Hansen did a fantastic, fabulous job with this, the traffic study and whether or not uh, cars would be rerouted to different streets and, and would they uh, burden a different street. Um, and it, it, it didn't turn out to be huge, but what, what really was huge was the way it slowed traffic down the temporary uh, homes. And, and the entire street seemed to be on board with it. There was one neighbor that did not want it right in front of her house so it was moved and then it was decided that to move them to separate them a little bit more so that you wouldn't get over one and then speed to get to the next one so there was a lot of thought and I, I, I would like uh, at some point here to recognize Laura Hansen um, if we could and she so could moved. she could go through uh, it was an exhaust it really was a pretty <clears throat> exhaustive procedure so there's been a motion made and seconded in Finance Committee to recognize uh, Ms. Hansen all those in favor say aye aye opposed okay Councilor Freeman Daniels was waiting okay. next, and then Councilor Carney. So, uh, Councilor Freeman Daniels. Um, thank you uh, for letting me speak at, during this committee meeting. Um, Mr. Mayor, I, I do wish that you had read the order for the acceptance of $500 for the new dishwasher first, because uh, mm -hmm. I, we do this a lot, and we don't think twice about it. We, if someone wants to fix up, let's say someone wants to fix up the park, one of the many beautiful parks we have in Northampton, f which is dra for which the maintenance is drastically underfunded, and they lend their labor to fix up the park, and it just happens to be a park that's close to their neighbor, that's close to their house, that's that's the neighborhood park. We don't think twice about letting them do that, about allowing them to fix up a park in front of it near to their their where they live. That's public space. We don't say it's trespassing. We don't say it's a dangerous precedent, et cetera, et cetera. Their labor is labor. People get compensated for their labor. So in a sen in certain sense, they're donating funds, whether that's, I mean, it wouldn't be a big difference if they decided not to go but hired somebody else to go in their stead. So uh, we would have, I think, as well, uh, if you had uh, reversed the order, mm -hmm. uh, at, uh, the Finance Committee would have quickly and easily accepted $500 towards a new dishwasher. And we should not have a similar problem with the 5,000 for speed humps. Unless, and this is I think a crucial part that a lot of the discussion missed, unless there was no appropriate process conducted, no public process conducted to allow the, alter, the alteration of a public way or public uh, publicly owned property. If, uh, if this, under the same situation, someone said I'd like to put I'd like to narrow my street or I'd like to put speed humps in, in it and so on and so forth. And we fa the, the city failed to ascertain that that would be in the public interest. And we allowed it to happen anyway. That would be something that is very disturbing and very troubling because that means that people with money would be able to uh, um, modify the public way without a, an appropriate process. But we didn't do that. The Transportation Parking Commission, with the help 
of the DPW through Laura Hanson, whom I hope will testify in a minute, did uh, its due diligence and we devoted the same amount of time to it that we would any traffic calming request. The traffic calming request uh, was granted without consideration. It was bumped up in the process because we had funding. That's very standard practice with any with anything when you know you're going to a project is viable, you're going to pay more attention to it. But we spent the same amount of time if the speed humps had not had an effect on lowering traffic speeds and uh, creating additional uh, safety provisions, we would not have voted to uh, install them. We would not be talking about this gift right now. The, the, someone could throw $2 million at us about an irrelevant uh, process and you know some irrelevant road or something like that. I hope that the council would not uh, prove it without its due diligence. Uh, and I, I, I do hope that we can hear from Ms. Hansen about this. Councilor Kearney. Yeah. Okay, and, uh, and then I'll ask uh, Laura to um, actually confirm what I'm about to say, which is that the Transportation and Parking Commission spent a long time actually under the leadership of uh, then uh, Councilor Narkowitz <clears throat> drafting and formulating a very detailed procedure for uh, how traffic calming, for how petitions would be evaluated and measured and the data. And one of those criteria is uh, uh, whether there are other funds available. And if so, if there are other funds, and it isn't specific, it doesn't say whether those be uh, private funds or uh, other government sourced funds. But that does bump a petition up, obviously, because then it makes it more uh, possible to, to complete. And that goes at really under the assumption that most, most of these petitions we really do want to support because we want to slow down traffic in the city. So um, I do recall <laughs> when I was on the Transportation and Parking Commission, Mr. Van Epps coming and talking about this very situation on uh, on Union Street. So the fact that, uh, as Councilor Freeman Daniels said, this is not unusual. Not, not only is it not unusual, but we've deliberately written it into our traffic calming manual and have it as a criteria for evaluation and measurement. And so there is a system in place. I guess that's all I really say, but um, uh, I would ask uh, uh, Laura to maybe, when you recognize Laura, yep. uh, how that bumped up this particular application. I think we have the Finance Committee has recognized you, so if you just want to give us a quick synopsis of, of why it is you think that the um, speed humps would be um, effective on Union Street, that'd be great. Thank you, and good evening. Um, as mentioned, I'm Laura Hansen, the traffic engineer in the city, and I just wanted to assure you that this particular traffic calming application has gone through the whole process with the Transportation and Parking Commission. Over a, year, over a year ago, a few residents from that street asked me about putting speed humps on Union Street, and I said, whoa, we have a whole traffic calming application process we have to go through. That's where it all started. They got the signatures and support, and um, their traffic calming application for Union Street was brought to the TPC last November. Um, what I did is I put out traffic counters to see what the initial speeds were, and indeed they were six miles over the speed limit um, going into the school zone. Because Bridge Street School is at the end of Union Street, there was extra concern for making sure people were going slow through that intersection. We brought it back to the Transportation and Parking Commission and they voted to put out the temporary speed humps, which, which we did, just made it in there for about a month before school ended. While those temporary speed humps were out, I put the traffic counters out again and it verified that it did bring down the speeds to 20 miles an hour, which is what we wanted going into that school zone. Uh, we did hold a public meeting as part of our whole traffic calming process. We, um, we had people from the neighborhood handing out over 100 flyers to invite them to the meeting. And um, then it went to the Transportation and Parking Commission and they did vote in approval to put in two speed humps on Union Street if, if these funds were accepted. This is just the first reading tonight and I believe um, the second reading would be scheduled for September 20th. So if you have any questions, I can answer. Councilor uh, Dwight. 
Um, uh, first of all, uh, thank you, Laura. And, and I'd like to say that I, I would, in, in my recent comments, I was not suggesting at any level that, that this was done frivolously or was accommodating someone who's wealthier. I'm actually describing a scenario of, of, of arrangement of circumstances that is, is, is unfair. It's not that the process wasn't unfair. It's not that everyone didn't do extend every effort to make it as fair as possible. To that end, Laura, I wanna, I, I'm not sure of the criteria list, the ranking or triage list, if you will, of, of uh, traffic calming um, projects that are basically in the pipeline, how they're ordered in the pipeline, mm -hmm. um, and based on urgency or sense of, I'm assuming that the, this, the the accident rates or the and traffic volume and those things sort of push those things way up um, where this sat on that list well actually there's 21 applications right now <clears throat> traffic calming applications and I believe Fruit Street was number uh, 18 in those 21 applications Union Union you said I'm sorry Union Street um, Union Street was number 16 sorry and um, when we do a ranking of these applications, there there are accidents um, that are ranked in there, the speeding and the neighborhood support and the amount of sidewalks. Of course, one of the criteria has to do with funding. Uh, we've noticed that's, that's a very important <laughs> part to actually get these projects done. So um, Union Street ranked in the middle of the pack, but because it was able to be funded was was moved to the top to to get completed. The uh, um, on a different note, the the efficacy of speed humps. We don't have speed humps as a rule of, around these parts. We have tables, elevated tables, and those are relatively new in the community. <coughs> but also, we have roads that are in serious disrepair that service traffic calming systems. But the uh, I was always under the impression that speed humps actually present a problem for plowing and maintenance, permanent speed humps as opposed to the temporary ones that have been tried out during dry seasons and not during the winter, of course. Um, could you enlighten me about the... Well, there are actually three speed humps up on Grove Street. They were the right. first permanent speed humps that were put in by the city. And um, I don't personally plow over those speed humps, but I think... Um, it's a learning curve. Our drivers, our DPW guys have done quite well and everything is signed when you're approaching the speed hump so they know when they need to lift the blade a little bit to get over the speed hump, go down. And every, they've, they've learned and, and that's just part of the learning curve and it's... Also part of the learning curve well. would be any damage that might be realized in the process of... Uh, yeah, I have not... I have not heard of any damage okay. from the street superintendent. Thank you. Councilor Freeman Daniels. I, I just want to clarify, um, to, to my knowledge, the Transportation Parking Commission, whenever it receives a traffic coming request, uh, investigates it, does some preliminary analysis, doesn't uh, just uh, shush it down on the list and say, oh, well, we'll get to that later or something like that. Uh, it's a commission that considers uh, every request seriously until uh, we ascertain or gives, get some sense of how uh, significant the issue is and whether there is funding and so on. It's, um, it's not that because of the availability of funds uh, that we spent extra time on it. Um, it's just that we, because of the availability, or rather, every, every request is given a lot of consideration. The one that's, that we have funds for, we try to advance uh, and vote to uh, vote on a specific a particular plan and so on and so forth uh, and I can say sense. as the person who designed the scoring system we purposely made funding a 50 point because that would be a circuit breaker that would immediately if, so, if there was funding for something it would immediately bring that to the top of the list so that it would get done because there was funding for it like Jackson Street like Grove Street like we have you know in Ward 3 there was the project from Hockenham the Hockenham Road condominiums, which provided some mitigation funds, so they were allowed to move forward with some projects because they had funding that was dedicated to it. So, a point of information on that point, I, I think that it's important to stipulate 
and indicate to the public and they understand that no project is losing out to this project. Right. That all the project status remains right. status quo. Exactly. That no pro no this is not coming at the expense of another neighbor. Yeah. And and I think that and, and I meant to say that in my original remarks because I think it's rather important is as we continue this debate. It's just that I, I'm saying the culture that we've established is I'm not palatable to me, but the fact is is that everyone in given the circumstances, the prescribed circumstances, have done the right thing, and that it should be noted and, uh, and emphasized that no no neighborhood, no community is losing out because this project is going forward. Councilor, and the, the proof of the need, uh, the application, the, the neighbors put this together, and the traffic count, the the, the speed, everything. The proof of the need was there. And it, I've heard the, the term kicked around so often in this room is low hanging fruit. When funding is there, it's just something that we can do. So let's pick the low hanging fruit. And um, But you're absolutely correct. It does not put anything else on hold or anything else, and nothing else loses out because of this. We were very fortunate to have somebody that was going to do this. The, whether it was DPW or not, it was going to be more expensive to have a private contractor, and they even said they would cover anything, any cost on that. So it was good. It was perfect. It, it, was a, it was a safety need for the school, and uh, I will continue to support it. I just, um, I'm, I'm speaking now as a member of the Finance Committee, so I believe I'm allowed to, to engage in, in some of the conversation. So I just also wanted to say that our ordinances already allow for um, improvements to be made through betterments. So there are, if right now there's a, there's a capacity in our ordinances that if you want to do a project on your street, um, the, the landowners on that street can, can move forward with that and they can do a betterment fee. Um, and we've had that happen in several streets, whether for water projects, sidewalk projects, et cetera. Um, and actually, some communities around the country use betterments to pay for speed humps. Um, that's how they do it. If you want a speed hump, then $5,000 betterment fee is charged to your street. Everybody pays a little bit more in their property tax to pay for that, and that's how it gets done. So we do have that capacity right now for neighborhoods if they want to willingly they can pay for things through the property tax through a betterment so just i'd like to make a motion we move this out of this and into this full council sure okay so there's been a motion uh, made and seconded on this um all those in favor of approving <coughs> say aye aye opposed okay and the question would be do you need uh, uh laura hansen to stay for the full council meeting no, no she can i don't think so great thank yeah. you thank very you very much, much. So this is the. Um, I said no use staying. The next item is upon the recommendation of the mayor and the finance committee, ordered that whereas Mr. Ken Patel of Quality Inn and Suites at 117 Con Street, Northampton, Mass, has offered to donate $500 to the fire department. The Northampton City Council gratefully accepts the donation as a gift to the City of Northampton to be used toward the purchase of a new dishwasher at the fire station in accordance with Mass General Law Chapter 44, Section 53A. Is there a motion? To approve. Second it. Okay, there's been a motion made and seconded in the Finance Committee. Councilor Barge. Yes, um, I talked with the Fire Chief Brian um, Duggan today about the dishwasher. And if I can recall way back, when we were in the process of putting up the fire station, that was one item that they did not have. There wasn't any money to have a dishwasher, so that one was um, donated, and it was an industrial one. So I asked Brian at this $500, how bad is this dishwasher? And this is what he had said to me, and I wrote it. Um, when the station was built, residential appliances were installed. Many of these appliances have failed over the last few years. These appliances receive heavy use on 24-hour basis. And that's true, because they are used 24 hours. The current unit is approximately five years old and has been repaired several times. They actually have to use a fork to hold the door <laughs> I mean that's ridiculous so anyways with the $500 they would like to go ahead 
Um, and I'm hoping that we can do two readings on this tonight to move this so they can go out and buy a residential dishwasher. Sometimes it runs two to three hours. And look at the amount of electricity that is being used on the dishwasher seven days a week. So I'm just asking that hopefully once it comes on the floor that we can look at it very closely of doing two readings so they can go out and buy a brand new dishwasher. Councilor Freeman Daniels. Councilor, uh, it, it says on the um, agenda that this is not being asked for for two readings. No, but I asked okay. the chief today. And he, he preferred to. Yes, he said if I, we could do it, that would be fine because they'll go out and buy it. Okay. Thank you. Is there any questions about this in the Finance Committee? Okay. All those in favor of accepting the gift uh, uh, gratefully for Mr. Patel, say aye. 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 Opposed? Any extension? Okay. Okay, the next item is upon the recommendation of the Mayor and the Finance Committee. Order that the following amounts be transferred from three Northampton Public Schools capital projects and reprogrammed to provide $15,000 in funds for the installation of a new heating system condensate tank at Leeds Elementary School, transferring from uh, the Leeds Bell Tower project $5,369.84, transferring from the Bridge Street School ejection pumps project $6,324.12, and transfer from the Jackson Street School Tile Replacement Project, $3,306.04. Is there a motion to recommend in finance? So moved. Second. Okay. Uh, I'll ask the finance director to provide a, any summary of this. Um, the <coughs> tank at Leeds Elementary is original to the building, and it's more than um, lasted, its, uh, lasted its lifespan. Um, the condensate tank connect, uh, collects residual moisture from all the unit ventilators that are in each room. Um, we need to do this in order to get the heating system up and running at Leeds. So they'd like to have um, two readings on this tonight so they can schedule the work and get it done before school starts so that they don't have to be in there when the kids are in there making the repair. And these are, this is, these are monies that were already approved by the council through the capital program. They're, we just, they're residual. We want to reprogram them to something else within the school department's capital program. Right. All of the pro original projects are complete. Okay. Do you have a question? These, these condensate uh, tanks are a very essential function that, um, for health, everything. Um, so I intend to support this. So in Finance Committee, all those in favor of this transfer, say aye. 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 Opposed? OK, so that's approved, and we'll come out to the full council. The next order is uh, upon the recommendation of the Mayor and the Finance Committee, order that $51,752 in the FY 2013 reserve for personnel be transferred to the following FY 2013 salary line items to salary increases for non-represented employees. Uh, city, count, city Council, uh, uh, $427. License Commission, $427. Mayor's Office, $4,268. Auditor, $3,002. Treasurer, $1,517. Human Resources, $6,172. MIS, $2,791. Central Services, $12,017. Police, $4,149. Dispatch, $11,446. Fire, $1,265. DPW, $2,534. Veterans, $399. Arts Council, $1,338. Uh, and that totals the $51,752. Move to approve. Second. Okay. Um, as you may recall, uh, we brought forward in July in order to um, pay for salary increases for several of our collective bargaining units on the city side. Um, what we are doing here is uh, giving equivalent um, increases to our non-represented uh, personnel, those who are not in uh, bargaining units. 
um, and so so that there's parity with uh, with the other employees. So that's essentially what we're doing, and we're moving it out of a reserve account that we keep for this purpose for contractual and and for other salary related items. Uh, so that's effectively what we're doing, and we wanted to. It's been a um, the past practice has been to wait and see when other contracts are settled, um, and then uh, try to base th those increases on the contract settlement. So that's what this represents. In short, parity that you're trying to achieve parity Six. with non-bargaining units. That's correct. So, for example, in my office, um, uh, by ver and in many of the other these, uh, the auditor's office, for example, um, some of the folks there are not in in my office particularly none of those folks are represented so they would not be eligible as opposed to their counterparts in other departments uh, would be so it should, it should be noted I I'll take this opportunity to point out that without collective bargaining these people wouldn't consequently be receiving these increases so that the, they also have benefited from um, the collective bargaining negotiations by unions just uh, just saying okay. <laughs> just out of curiosity, four hundred twenty-seven dollars for city council. Now, what is that? That Mary. would be Mary McMurray. Okay. Oh, perfect. Okay. Thank yep. you. That would represent the percentage increase to her salary that we're and giving to other um, represented and our limousines, and also on license commission <laughs> since she's shared by both. What's Thank you. Mean? Yeah, not to city councilors. Thank you. Which positions in the police department does this cover? These would be the. Um, no. There's, there's um, a couple of non. -rep positions that work in the front office and like this does it and the records uh, records, uh, records uh, department person, um, person, like, three 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 does this cover every person that's not represented in the police department yes it does not cover two police. No, or, okay. captains, or, or, or the, the cap or the yeah I noted that or the police captain so the lieutenant does it cover the liaison to Northampton courts uh what is that person's name? Lori Spear. Yes, I yes, believe it does. it does. I think it's 427 divided by 52 weeks. She would be in there, wouldn't she? I know she's not represented. She's okay. And the same goes for the fire department, the clerical staff uh, in the fire department as well. There's a. Uh, in the case of dispatch, all of our none of our dispatch employees are represented, so that's why there's a significant number in there because essentially all of our dispatchers are non-represented so yeah it says uh, the list that I have says police court administrator police department secretary supervisor of records that list is in here um, I'm not sure I, I I think I included it you did it's a packet but, I didn't packet. It, but we do have the packet yeah. it's the list, uh, list that I got from HR of all the non-rep positions I didn't bring it. They're not in here. Okay. We can certainly provide it for you. That'd be great. Thank if you. If you go to your budget book, it's actually it's in there as well. Okay. So it'll uh, in the budget book for the police department. You list who's represented, who's not, what units are in. But we can get that list for you. Okay. Thank but you. I think I in the narrative. I think I said I included the list, and I have the list, but I don't think you got the list. Okay. We can get that out to you. Got it. <laughs> but I have it now, if you want me to read it. Would you like us to read those? I have it at home. No. <laughs> Any other questions about this in Finance Committee? Okay. Um, and then I guess I would, uh, the only thing I would ask when we come into the regular meeting, um, uh, we did do two readings last time on yeah. the other um, collectively bargained raises if that would be considered in this meeting uh, that would, uh, that's something for you to consider we don't need two meetings in finance we don't no 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 just i mean when we go out of the regular because otherwise it would wait till september 20th uh, for these uh, so okay so all those in favor in finance say aye aye, aye. aye. opposed any abstentions aye. okay the next item is uh this is upon the recommendation of the mayor and the finance committee ordered that the city council transfer $54,700.69 from account number 3,35090209, install fiber optic wide area network, and $2,336.11 from account number 3,35090109, 
install voice over internet protocol telephone system for a total of $57,036.80 and add these funds to the five-year capital plan account number 3,000-3509-1010 to be used to replace computers on an ongoing basis per the technology capital plan. Move to approve. Second. Okay. Council. How has this been working out our new phone system monetarily? Oh, in terms of the uh, in terms of savings, I mean, we see the continue to see these big numbers. Um, I'm just kind of curious as to how we have have we saved money with the new phone system. I would have to analyze that, and I can yeah, we, we, I can have that yeah. for the finance. Yeah, committee. I know it was a big sales pitch for the council. Okay. I mean, um, we're certainly reaping the. It's certainly being paid for yep. with the savings um, from the reductions as well as the payments from Comcast that we receive every year for it. So I'm fairly certain we'll find that there's been a reduction, but we can do it, and we can try to get some information. I'm just curious as yeah. to you know I know because uh, you know it was a big sales pitch, and I'm just wondering how, just exactly how we're making how we stand with it. And again, these are just some residuals from that yep. capital project. Yep. The MIS. Just seemed like the appropriate time to yep. ask. Okay, we can try to find that out. Um, and and you have information in your memorandum. Um, why uh, MIS is hoping to have you do this um, so that they can um, fulfill some of the items in their capital five-year capital plan, particularly in the replacement of computers. Yeah, I don't expect any answers till after the election. Uh, oh, <laughs> special election. <laughs> You'll be quite busy. Okay. Um, any questions about this? Hearing none, in finance, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, so that'll come out to the full council. Um, the next order uh, will be a late file um, in the council, but we'll need to have you review it in the finance committee. This is upon the recommendation of the mayor and the finance committee. Ordered that in accordance with chapter 44, section 20 of the general laws, the sum of $26,900 is transferred from unexpended amounts originally appropriated to pay costs of the JFK pool filter replacement project to pay additional costs of improvements to the Northampton High School track. Is there a Second. Yes. Okay, so there's been a motion made and seconded in finance. Councilor Adams. Out of the 20, uh, 26900 which is going to the pool filter replacement project as opposed to the track? Okay. There were two capital projects in the FY12 plan. There was $75,000 appropriated for the pool filter at JFK, and then there was $70,000 appropriated for the high school track, 50 bar <coughs> 20 cash. The filter, um, all of the bids are in on the filter project and the pro the pool project is only going to need 48,100 out of the 75 that was appropriated. So the school would like to take what's left of that 75, which is the 269 and move it to the track. The track, the bids that came in on the track, we've spent about 5,000 on design. Uh, the bid that came in was 80,000 and then there's a few other things. So we're going to need between 85 and 90 to do the track, and right now we only have 70. Okay, so that was left over, and we're just, right. we're just doing we're, that 26,900 is going from that to that. Right, and, and they felt it was it's keeping the capital project within the same department and almost right. the same youth athletics. Nothing additional, just right. a transfer. Programming Simple transfer. Said, yeah, unused. Or reprogramming. Excuse yeah. Me. Okay, uh, any other questions about this in finance? Okay, so all those in favor um, of this uh, of this, uh, say aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, so that will come out to the full council. Say one more. Oh. I just wanted to explain why it's a late file. We were going to bring it to the September 6th meeting, um, but they want to put this out to bid and do the work in October, so we're hoping for two readings. No problem. Okay. Um, let's see. Moving on, uh, we're now uh, into financial updates. We have a break, man. Uh, sure. Okay, we're going to just do a quick uh, recess of finance committee. Uh, five minutes.
has another. Okay, welcome back. We're coming back out of a recess. Uh, the, we're currently in the Finance Committee of August 16, 2012. Uh, we've completed all of our financial orders. Uh, we're now down to uh, financial updates, uh, including the FY12 budget closeout, and I'll turn it over to the finance director. Okay, I'm gonna be brief and just go through some of the highlights in the memorandum that you have. I will note that this memo and all of the handouts with it will be on the um, website under the mayor's office finance director's corner. Um, I did want you to know where we stood with the um, two storm events that we had in FY12, uh, the FEMA reimbursements, Hurricane Irene, uh, which was in August of 2011. Uh, we ended up getting approval for $96,441 worth of expenses, of which we received 75% reimbursement. And all of that reimbursement money is in. Um, so we did receive that before the end of fiscal year. So we were able to take any expenses related to Hurricane Irene out of individual departmental budgets before year-end close. So nobody's budget suffered because of that. Uh, the Halloween snowstorm was a little bit different. Um, so far, we have eligible project costs amounting to 229000 of which we will get 75% reimbursement of 172000 We've received to date only 53,000. Uh, the project uh, worksheets have been kind of slow to get through the process. So we, with the first reimbursement, that 52,000, we were able to, again, supplement the uh, departmental budgets that were affected by that particular project worksheet. But all the other expenses were basically carried in those department budgets because we didn't get the money until the end of June. So what will happen now is as that remaining money comes in, that 120 something thousand dollars, that will sit in a separate fund that we've set up in FY13, and at the end of FY13, it will close to free cash. So it'll close to the general fund. Um, but we weren't able to get that back into people's uh, departmental budgets. Um, so just wanted you to know where we were with those two. Uh, the rest of the uh, memo deals most, mainly with the general fund. And I've looked at both revenues and expenditures. Uh, the sheet that I gave you for revenues was out of Munis, and it shows you um, where we are. We have two revenue sources that I'm waiting to come in. We have until September 28th to get them in. We're looking at um, $7,000 for building department inspection revenue and another $9,600 from Smith College for the pilot payment. Um, there are two lines on this that came in higher than you see in the um, report. Um, the reason that they, I want to note that they came in higher is anything that came in over the original estimate went into a different fund. Um, the first one is parking revenues. Uh, we estimated 1.4 million. We actually received 1.7 million. So $360,000 in parking revenues that were above the original estimate went into the parking revenue, the parking receipt reserve for appropriation. Susan, is that because of the increase? That the the of, increase of the parking fees. Right, the increase in the parking fees was not built into the FY12 budget. Okay. We have built it into the FY13 budget, so there's not going to be this big of a surplus in FY13. Uh, the other line item um, that reads uh, that it brought in exactly what we budgeted is Smith uh, Voke tuition, which is on the second page. And again, Smith Voke tuition came in $117,000 above the original estimate. And when that happens, the, the additional money goes into their tuition revolving fund so that they can access that. Um, if you look at the last page of the report, you can see that um, total revenues, once we get the two that I'm looking at, still coming in are 70.7 million. We got in 99.8% of our revenues, which is above last year, which was 99.7. And when you back out, um, as the DOR does, the real estate taxes that didn't come in, we actually had a surplus of $600,000 in revenues that came in over estimates. So it was a, a much better year than FY11. A um, couple of things that I'd like to highlight, the, um, uh, let's see, tax titles. We had a number of tax title properties pay off this year, 275000 came in in back taxes and $79,000 in interest on tax titles. 
and meals and hotel motel taxes continue to be the one very bright spot for Northampton. Um, if you look at the chart that I included, meals, tax, and hotel motel came in $145,000 above last year. So the meals tax grew 19.9% over last year. So I think that that says, you know, some, some very positive things. Uh, the hotel motel tax also grew by 8%. So this is the uh, third consecutive year we've seen an increase in both of those. So I think that those are good indicators. Susan, I just want to backtrack a little bit. On, on this, it says, also of note, backing out uncollected real estate taxes. Right. How long, because I know that we've had difficulties in the city. There was one period that it was really bad, like the nursing home and so forth, as an example. How long do we keep them on the books without paying taxes here in the city? After a year, the collector puts them into tax title. And if they don't pay within that year, they go to the city treasurer. He works on them for another year. And then they move into the next processes when we actually take them. Now, um, George Zimmerman, when he first came in, uh, really started going after some of the low-hanging fruit. And we were very successful at that and continue to be. Uh, we have started a task force, um, George Zimmerman, myself, Wayne Fiden, and Joan Serafin, and we are now starting to look at the list that's been on there for a long, long time, and starting to take each one of those properties and say, what do we need to do with this? Is this something that the city wants? Is this something that we should look at selling? There's some that are land of low value because they don't, they're little pieces from yeah. developments that nobody really wants. So we're going through all of that now, trying to take the next step, which is really clean up this list. We do have a attorney, uh, Bloom and Berenson, that works with George Zimmerman, and they have a certain number of properties that we think are fruitful that we've given to them to work through the system. And when those pay off, they pay the fees of the attorney. And so. even if they know that we do have a procedure in the city, if somebody is hurting financially where they cannot make up their taxes or pay the city their taxes, that they can actually go into a payment plan. Absolutely, yes. And how many people actually do that? Do you know? I don't know how many payment plans we have, but I can find that out. Because I know I had helped somebody on my board with that, and it was very, very successful. Right but I was wondering if we were still doing that or not. Right, that, that is always our preferred route. I mean, the last thing we want to do is be taking properties. So, mm -hmm. um, so we do, that's why we do that two-step process, one year with Lissa, one year with the treasurer, and then, and then we try to, then we get a little bit tougher. Thank you. Okay, so on the revenue side, as I said, things um, looked pretty good. The only area of concern um, was building permits and what I want to say about the permits is that the building inspection department was as busy as ever. They had the same number of permits. It's just that the value of those permits was down. Um, so the chart that I gave you is all, is all about the money, not about the actual number of permits. And you can see um, that we took a big dip in 2009, uh, came back a little bit in 10, and then 10, 11, and 12 have been all going down. Um, permits uh, in 2012 came in $87,000 behind the previous year of 11, and that was $70,000 behind the previous year before that. So we're hoping that this will pick up. There's a number of projects in 13 that um, hopefully will add to our new growth in 13 and 14. I'm noticing some folks are, are may not have some of these documents that you're referring to. I don't, I don't know. I don't have, they, we don't have that chart. They I don't have that. I, is it? I, I don't. It was know. in the. It's, it's not. It's not with the directors. No, it's it's, it's behind the um, service contracts. It's in the same. In the same service contract. It's behind the service contract, which was part of the finance director's report. Right. Service okay. contracts. After the service. Yeah. So there, there it is, right there. Okay. You just went past it. Yeah. Oh, okay. So there's this chart. It's a, yeah. It's attached to it was. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It was all the appendixes to the finance director's report. Okay. Uh, service contracts. Okay. okay, so that um, 
that's just a visual to show you what was going on um, with building permits. Um, I also included for you uh, a revenue history so that you could see um, five years of, of history on each one of those line items. Um, going on to expenditures. Uh, I gave you the printout from Munis. It shows the general fund expenditures except for the schools. The schools spent 100% of their appropriation, so I didn't include those. Um, our, on the city side, um, out of our $47.8 million side of the budget, um, we spent 44.9, we encumbered 1.7. So once we have the, this, this didn't include the um, salary uh, transfers that we made at the last meeting, which was taking some of the salary from 12 and using it in 13 for those collective bargaining agreements. But once we subtract out that from the balance, turnbacks from city departments were $1,025,000. Mm. And this is um, compared to last year, the turnbacks were 660000 So this is significantly more money being turned back from the departments. I think part of it was the mayor's effort um, in January to um, have all purchases over $250 come through the mayor's office. Um, and it certainly puts us, you know, in a better position for next year. I think also snow and ice wasn't what we thought it would be. Just out of curiosity, that if, if that's what you can attribute some of those um, givebacks to, it seems like it was very effective. Has that was has that has that is there precedent to that in the city? In what? In 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 when when you when you asked the departments to um, get approval for you of was it all spending over each expenditure over two hundred fifty dollars was that what it was? I, I there may have been uh, past spending freezes or advisories put into effect I don't know oh, okay it just seems like if that if that's what we can attribute that to that's that was highly effective well I, I think it was very effective and and the mayor has um, continued that although that you raised the limit from 250 to a thousand yeah. um, but so. I've asked all of my department heads to be reviewing closely every expenditure mm -hmm. uh, and I'm now looking at the ones over a thousand and I'm reserving the right to to lower that if I want if I need to but mm -hmm. um, but I, so yeah, that's what it's, we are. It's hard to quantify what that saved because we don't know. But sure. right. I do right. feel that that contributed quite a bit to the to the turnbacks. So the little discipline goes a long way. And I have a one question on uh, back to the Halloween snowstorm. We had um, collected fifty three thousand of the one seventy two, leaving one hundred nineteen thousand dollars out there. And you said they were able to absorb that in their budget. Right. The, the, the rest of the expenses that we documented that we um, didn't get reimbursement for yet were, were expenses that were in the DPW budget, in the fire budget, in the police budget, et cetera. So all of those were just part of their regular you know, budget. Yeah. Had we not gotten any reimbursement, this is exactly what we're It having. helped that we had a mild winter. Yeah. Yep. It was like snow and ice, you know, <coughs> yep. things like that would have been overwhelmed if we had. Right. Just passed, well, it was a bonus. I mean, exactly. let's face it, so that's, that okay, right. compared to the year before. Right. Okay. Well, if you look, um, one of the charts that I did gave, give you was for the, on the expenditure side, those four big accounts that we have typically um, not been able to budget to the actuals was snow and ice, veterans benefits, fire overtime, and legal. And if you look at snow and ice, in 2011 we spent 811000 and in 2012 we spent 363000 And looking at this list, 2012 was the least amount we've spent for snow and ice in about eight years. So it was a very unusual year. Huge, yep. So, and I just do want to talk about that chart just for a few minutes. Um, I added the 2012 actuals and recalculated the three-year average. And then I showed you what we've budgeted in FY13 for each one of those. And you can see um, that snow and ice is, is up to 426000 in 2013. It's still below the three-year average, um, but we got another $100,000 um, veterans benefits is within fifteen thousand dollars now of what we've actually been spending, so that's good. Um, fire overtime is actually sli slightly above what the three-year average is, and legal is um, in a in a better position at one hundred and thirty. Uh, it's about sixty-four thousand short of our three-year average. But why why I point this out is all of this is is going to help in two thousand thirteen 
when we close the year because we will probably not have to tap our free cash as much because now these accounts have been budgeted closer to their actual expenditures. Correct. So it's just going to put us in a better position at the close of FY13. Um, I did also look at veterans benefits, which was another chart. And um, if, if you have that one, I looked at the reimbursement that we've been getting from the state. And I think that this chart was interesting because as veterans benefits have grown, of course, we know the, the reimbursement from the state um, also grows. And it's kind of a lag. I think Steve Connor has told us it can take up to 18 months for these reimbursements to kind of trickle back to the city. But if you look at FY12, we spent $526,000 in veterans benefits. But after the reimbursements, excuse me, we spent almost 600000 in veterans benefits. But 94 of it was actually city money, and 526 was reimbursement. So you can see that the city's, the actual outlay of the city's money is actually starting to go down um, because the reimbursements are starting to catch up with us. And the other good news on veterans' benefits is that they've leveled off. We have now hit two years where we've had pretty much the same exact number. So our hope is that we've kind of leveled off at around 600000 a year. And the FY13 budget, as I said, is basically budgeted just about 600000 So we should be good there. Thank Obama for that one. Right. And then I did include um, a history, five years of expenditures, if you wanted to make some comparisons. And then lastly, the revolving fund report. Every year when you approve the budget, you approve about 20 orders for revolving funds. And if you read that statute, it says that the, we're supposed to report to you the beginning balances, the expenditures, the revenues that came in. So I did include a chart for you that shows um, all of the revenues and all of the expenditures that came in and out of the revolving funds. And then the last thing I, I won't go over, I just did want to note that um, for 2011, CARAC, the Public Employee Retirement Administration Commission, issued its annual report for our retirement board. And I know um, Mayor Higgins used to say before that we were the least worst one year. Well, no, this was not a good year for retirement boards in general, but we were among the least worst. Um, we were in the top four um, for returns. Um, which is pretty good. And it's interesting, the, the company that manages our investments manages the top four. So I think we're in good hands there. That's great. Which is that, which, uh, is that? DeBerlo <laughs> Associates. <laughs> but it's very interesting that they actually manage the top four producing boards. Yes, because it says North Dent was the third in the state. Yeah. That's amazing. That's great. So. Okay. Are That's there any it. questions about this uh, review of FY12? Okay. Um, we have one other item which it, it, it uh, came up when we were referencing the appendixes. We do have an order that didn't make it onto the agenda, but it is on the agenda for the council. And this is um, uh, this is for the joint um, the agreements, intergovernmental intergovernmental agreements, and so. Just to be safe, because it's sponsored by finance, I do want to do it in finance committee before we do it in the main meeting. Um, so let me take this one up as well in finance. Upon the recommendation of the mayor and the finance committee, order that whereas Massachusetts General Law Chapter 40, Section 4A, allows for joint operation of public activities among governmental units, and whereas Mass General Law Chapter 40, Section 4A, requires that such intergovernmental agreements be approved in a city by the city council and the mayor, and whereas the city of Northampton provides services to and shares services with other municipalities, therefore, pursuant to Mass General Law Chapter 40, Section 4A, the city council hereby authorizes the city of Northampton to enter into the following intermunicipal agreements for FY13. Service contracts for the provision of shared services between the town of Amherst and the city of Northampton, agreement to share equ equally the services of an assistant sanitarian employed by Amherst and a public health nurse employed by Northampton, contract with the town of Williamsburg for building inspection and zoning enforcement services, agreement to provide the town of Williamsburg with these services for $31,000, 
contract with the town of Williamsburg for electrical inspection services, agreement to provide the town of Williamsburg with these services with fees for permits turned over to the city of Northampton, contract with the towns of Amherst, Chesterfield, Cummington, Pelham, Williamsburg, Goshen, and Worthington to provide veteran services offices, officer services, agreement to provide these services to the various communities and assessments to individual towns per the agreement, contracts with the town of Amherst, Hadley, and East Hampton for municipal hearing officer services, agreement to provide a municipal hearing officer pursuant to MGL chapter 148A section 2C to hear complaints related to alleged violations of state building codes or the state fire codes. Is there a motion? Second. To Second. So uh, as I was preparing to sign um, one of these agreements, which was a renewal, um, I asked the city solicitor to review it. We've had several of these in force for many years, and he um, advised that under Mass General Law, these agreements not only require the mayor's approval, they require the city council's approval. So in some cases, these are agreements that have been in effect for multiple years, um, but as we're renewing them for FY13, I'm now bringing them all to the city council uh, for your approval. Uh, so that is the purpose of bringing these agreements. And many of them you recognize, we've been doing these uh, shared agreements. Um, uh, and I know we have the building commissioner here, if there are questions about the Williamsburg um, electrical or building ones uh, and obviously the veteran services one we know about we've been uh, engaged in that and that's been expanding um, and, and then the other the others as well so these are renewals of existing agreements but for FY 13 I want to formally bring them to the council for its approval can we recognize the building inspector yes. we certainly can there's been a motion made Second. seconded in finance all those in favor say aye aye, aye. aye. Uh, <coughs> Mr. Hasbro okay. Mr. Hasbrook. So we uh, <clears throat> share services with Williamsburg. Um, it's it's our department also. Our department has had an agreement with Williamsburg. It's this, we're into the third year now, um, and I think it's very successful. We've been careful to the first year. We based our agreement on the prior year's activities in Williamsburg. In terms of permits and inspections, we adjusted it the second year. The, the contract went from uh, for building services from 19,500 the first year to 21,000 the second year. We've gone to 31,000 for this current year because they're building a school, and there's going to be an awful lot more inspection and, and planning involvement that year. We took over Williamsburg Electrical Services uh, Inspection Services last year. It's done on a fee-for-service basis, and the Williamsburg fee schedule is on a uh, fee per inspection basis. So we're paid essentially $65 per inspection. We do the inspections. We collect the permit fees. We turn the permit fees over they turn them back to us as opposed to a contracted price to provide services on the building side. Council LaBarge. Yes, thank you. So by doing this, Louie, and I know like we really were kind of low with permits here in the city for a period of time, this is also generating our city for money, right? We're getting the money. We, we, definitely, we definitely are paid. We're paid. And what about your staff? Do you have adequate staff? We do. And in, in part of the, when we initially entered the agreement with Williamsburg, it was an attempt to, to be able to have more staff. Um, and the, it's, the last year, FY12, the revenues were down considerably in the north, on the Northampton side. They were also down on the Williamsburg side. <coughs> The fee that Williamsburg paid us was a, an agreed fee. Their, their payment didn't go down. But on, in both municipalities, the number of permits went up. It's not that we aren't taking in permits. It's the permits are for much smaller jobs. So having Williamsburg paying us for you know, inspection services has enabled us to have more people there. Um, it's. Uh, Nobody sits around, but 
there's times where if we had a per, if we didn't have the Williamsburg inspections, we couldn't have afford. We would have a half time inspector instead of instead of two two plus one half time inspector instead of three, and having that extra half time person available lets us spread the load out. They're available for Northampton inspections where they might not be, and it Williamsburg services don't take up a full inspector's time certainly Councilor Dwight uh, what you're describing of course is a national trend that larger development projects are not proceeding whereas people instead of building new houses are improve, doing home improvements so their permits value is less suppose as promised that the economy starts to turn around and things get hunky dory and suddenly larger development projects start to establish themselves what kind of burdens that put on your office on the, these kind of shared services from municipalities I think I think Williamsburg and Northampton are are very closely linked and and I think that what happens in, North, in Northampton is reflected in Williamsburg I think also what happens in Williamsburg is, is reflected in Northampton it's they're they're very the communities are very close I think that if we see a big uptick in, in uh, permit activity. Um, we'll be busy, and I hope we're busy. You know, I'd be happy to be really busy. Um, and if, if uh, in just the same way as we've used, uh, uh, we have a full-time electrical inspector, and we take part-time people if need be. We would, we would be able to move towards an additional, um, you know, uh, non-represented part-time inspector. Um, I think we have the um, we have the capacity now. I think to to go a bit farther than than we are. we are not completely stretched at this point. But the the fee is a flat fee, or is it for Williamsburg? It's a flat fee. So they it, it's clearly to be renegotiated every year. Okay. So depending and and that's enough of a time span for you to predict trends that I, I feel like it is I yeah feel like we can, so there's no we can point at which you're gonna you, you feel fairly comfortable you're not gonna feel that we're getting short trip they're getting a good value on service and um, I, I think we did really well this year and I think that that I looked really carefully at how much time commitment we're going to be putting into the school project that they're going to do right. and and I feel really comfortable with the amount that we've budgeted for it and that the the discussions about the next year's contract fees will, will be you know we'll be looking at it in December and I think we'll have a really good idea of what the next year is going to be like whether the projects we see on the table are going to you know develop and turn into something or or um, they'll just or are they going to just get put off so are there any questions any other questions about this or the other uh, service contracts um, I'd also like to say that I work with uh, really closely with uh, the sanitarian that we share with Amherst, and that's another situation where if we don't have time to have a full-time person necessarily, but sharing the person with Amherst, we've called him and had him come when he was actually working in Amherst to deal with a situation that developed when we didn't have the staff to do it. and. Um, you know he's he's got a halftime responsibility in Amherst and halftime responsibility in Northampton, but the flexibility of having him and being able to have him leave here to address the situation there or vice versa, I mean he's not punched in Northampton and not available when he's in Amherst, and those are the sorts of, of arrangements that give us more flexibility. And I will say also in terms of the veterans piece, um, uh, this month uh, Hadley. Their veterans services officer stepped down, and so we're doing a, a temporary with with Hadley. Um, they they we, we've stepped in to assist them because they have several veterans who need help. So and their select board is looking at possibly joining the district as well. The reason we haven't been able to just create a full fledged veterans district um, is because under the state law, uh, you have to all the cities have to be contiguous. And because Hadley's not in this district, we're not eligible to, to become a full-fledged veterans district under the statute. So that's why we have to do this intermunicipal agreement. I mean, we're technically a veteran service district that would be exempt. You wouldn't need to have this agreement. You would just create the district. 
um, but because we don't have Hadley, uh, we're, we're, we have to do this contract every year to renew it. Um, but Hadley is now debating the possibility of joining the district. We're, we're not contiguous because a river? Uh, no, what I'm saying is that Hadley breaks up the, the oh, oh, I see. Because we don't have right. Hadley Got as it. one of the members, it breaks up that Sorry. contiguous nature of the district. Yeah. That's Hadley's the, the holdout. That's the two districts. Right. It's a hole in the donut. Yeah, exactly. So DMZ. Um, yes. Although ironically, um, Mr. Connor says that if you go to the state and you look at what the model is for a veterans district, they use ours as the model, even though it doesn't fit the it doesn't fit the legal definition. They love the way ours is structured and the way we deliver services and all that kind of stuff. So anyway, um, any other questions for Mr. Hasbrook? Okay. Um, so again, this is in finance, and this is to approve Thank these agreements. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lou. This is to approve these agreements for FY13. Um, so all those in favor in finance, say aye. Aye. Opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. All right. So um, uh, new business. Um, I have just one announcement that I wanted to make, just as an FYI uh, out of the finance committee. Um, you may recall in my budget address, um, I, I um, in the area of discussing um, our health uh, care and our health care costs, I mentioned in there that I was planning to bring forward um, legislation to the council to accept uh, the authority to um, go into the new municipal reform health care legislation. Um, and I wanted to just give you a heads up that I'm going to bring that forward in September. Um, so I will be bringing that forward. We will be going through the notification process and notifying all of our collective bargaining units of that, and that will all be done. But I wanted to give you a heads up that that's going to happen. Um, and we'll get lots of information out to you and to the public before that happens. But I wanted to give you way advance notice of that, of that going forward. Um, okay, so the next item, uh, then I'll ask for an adjournment of the Finance Committee. To adjourn. Second it. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Does Louie have, okay, he's going. Yep. Does he Thank you. This? Okay, so now we're moving back out to the regular uh, meeting, and we have um, reports of committees. We have Committee on Elections, Rules, Ordinances, Orders, and Claims, minutes of June, June 11th, 2012. We have the Transportation and Parking Commission, minutes of June 19th, 2012, and June 27th, 2012, and the minutes of June 27th, 2012. And we have the Committee on Disability minutes of June 19th, 2012. Move to approve. Second. I, okay. I would like to speak about the Committee on Disabilities meetings. Okay. Those are sent just for counselors to look at, not to approve. Okay. okay. So I thought I'd let you do that. All right. So all those in favor of accepting the... Can I just make a comment that uh, a lot of the discussion about Union Street uh, took place in those meetings. Uh, yeah. The minutes are... Okay. All those in favor of accepting the minutes, say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. So those are all accepted. So now we'll move uh, right back to the financial orders that we just completed in Finance Committee. Uh, the first is upon the recommendation of the Board of Public Works. Uh, uh, request waiving of waiving of the meeting. Just read the the. Uh, I'll read headline. the ordered section. So, uh, ordered that the city council approves the acceptance of the gift of Mr. Timothy Van Epps for the purpose of constructing speed humps on Union Street. In the event that the project costs less than five thousand, the balance will, will be re returned to the donor. Move to approve. approve. Second. Second. Okay. Is there any further discussion on this? Nope. Hearing none. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed. Any abstentions? Uh, point of information, I don't recall, was this requiring two readings? Was it a, what's that? There's a, yes. There's a request, request for two okay, readings. Okay, then I move to suspend the rules. Second. Okay. All those in favor of suspending the rules for two readings, say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. I'll entertain a motion. So moved. Second. Okay. There's been a motion made and seconded to approve on second reading. Uh, all those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. Uh, the next item is um, upon the recommendation of the Maryland Finance Committee. Uh, Mr. Ken Patel of Quality Inns and Suites, 117 Con Street, uh, offered to donate 500 to the fire department. Um, and 
the City Council gratefully accepts as a gift to the City of Northampton to be used for the purchase of a new dishwasher at the fire station. Move so approved. Second it. Okay. Um, um, all I those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? This is, we can suspend, rule. suspend Rule 14. Okay. And there's a second. All those in favor of suspending rules say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Rules are suspended. I'll entertain a motion on second reading. So moved. To approve. Second. Okay, there's been a motion made and seconded. Uh, any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Uh, the gift is accepted. Uh, the next item is uh, ordered that, uh, that the following amounts be transferred from three Northampton Public Schools capital projects and reprogrammed to provide $15,000 in funds for the installation of a new heating system condensate tank at Leeds Elementary School. Second it. Okay. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Need to suspend rules. Okay. Second. Okay, there's been a motion made and seconded uh, to suspend rule. 14. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Move second reading. Second. second. There's been a motion made and seconded for second reading. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. The next item ordered that $51,752 in the FY 2013 reserve for personnel be transferred to the following uh, to the following FY 2013 salary line items for salary increases for non-represented employees. Move to approve. Move to approve. Second. Okay. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. This requires suspension rules. Uh, I would request it if I we... would I move to suspend rules. Second. Second it. Okay. All those in favor of suspending rule 14 say aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? Move to the second reading, please. Second. second. Okay. Uh, made uh, second reading has been moved and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. Uh, the next is uh, upon the recommendation of the Mayor and Finance Committee. Uh, this is a transfer uh, from uh, fiber optic wide area network and install VOIP telephone system uh, totaling $57,036.80. Uh, to the five-year capital plan account to be used to replace computers on an ongoing basis. Move to approve. approve. Second. Second. Is there any discussion on this in the council? Hearing none, um, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? I'd like to suspend the rule. Okay. Motion. 14. Okay. Is there a uh, second? Aye. Okay. All those in favor of suspending rules say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Rules are suspended. Uh, we're all here. <laughs> is there a motion to approve on second reading? So moved. Second. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Say aye. <laughs> Opposed? What's that? Okay. So uh, that's been approved on second reading. And the next item is uh, in accordance with Chapter 44, Section 20, the sum of uh, 26900 is transferred from unexpended amounts to pay the costs of the JFK full flow replacement. Uh, and transfer. Oh, we need a suspension of rules because it's a late file. First. Move to suspend rule 38. 38. Okay, rule 38. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. So uh, now that motion to approve. So move, move to approve. Second. Okay. So um, all those in favor aye. say aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. <laughs> so um, the finance director had requested two readings on this one move as well. To suspend rules, please. Second. Second. Okay. All those in favor of suspending rules say aye. 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 Opposed? <laughs> okay. I'll entertain a motion on second reading. Second. second move. Reading, please. Second. Okay. The motion made and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? Okay. Okay. So that completes all of the financial <clears throat> orders. Um, so we will now move into the regular orders. And Mr. Mayor, is yes. there one about the accepting of or was that not a financial order uh, I believe we we listed it under regular right, orders. Got so so the next one is uh, this is upon the recommendation of city clerk Wendy Maza ordered that meetings of the members of the Democratic Republican and Green Rainbow in the city of Northampton qualified to vote will be held on Thursday September 6 2012 in the several polling places designated for the purpose by the City Council as follows. Mm -hmm. 
Ward 1, Precinct A and Jackson Street School Auditorium. Ward 1, Precinct B and Jackson Street School Auditorium. Ward 2, Precinct A and Smith Vocational Agricultural High School. Ward 2, Precinct B and Smith Vocational Agricultural <coughs> High School. Ward 3, Precinct A and the Senior Center, Great Room, 67 Con Street. Ward 3, Precinct B and the Senior Center, Great Room, 67 Con Street. Ward 4, Precinct A and the Senior Center, Great Room, 67 Con Street. Ward 4, Precinct B and the Senior Center, Great Room, 67 Con Street. Ward 5, Precinct A in the Florence Civic and Business Building, 90 Park Street. Ward 5, Precinct B in Smith Vocational Agricultural High School. Ward 6, Precinct A in the Robert K. Finn Ryan Road School. Ward 6, Precinct B in the Robert K. Finn Ryan Road School. Ward 7, Precinct A in the John F. Kennedy Middle School Community Room. And Ward 7, Precinct B in Lead School Gymnasium Lower Level. The polls will be open at 7 o'clock in the forenoon and closed at 8 o'clock in the evening of the said day, and all such members will, in the wards in which they are entitled to vote between said hours, give in their votes for nomination of candidates for Senator in Congress, Representative in Congress for the 2nd Congressional District, for Counselor from the 8th District, for Senator in General Court for the Hampshire and Franklin and Worcester District, for representative in the general court for the first Hampshire district and for register of deeds for the Hampshire district and for clerk of courts for Hampshire County and for register of probate to fill a vacancy for Hampshire County. Move to approve. Is that, uh, is that the ballot? I believe I, if you'd like, you I will, unless you have questions, uh, so you I will, I'll accept a motion to approve this. Yeah. To approve. I already yeah. did. Okay, so it's been made Second. and seconded. Um, there is a list of all the candidates, which I, I'll let uh, members of the public that that's available um, online. So, um, is there any discussion of this? This is, of course, setting the primary on Thursday, September sixth. And there's two readings on this. It's been requested, I believe, by the city. Suspend rule forty. Okay, so first, all those in favor on first reading. Yes. Aye. 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 Opposed. Okay. Vote to suspend rules, please. Okay. Said it. So there's been a motion 14. made and seconded uh, to suspend rule 14. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. Move second reading. Second. Okay. There's been a motion made and seconded uh, to approve on second reading. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. So that has been approved and the primary election is ordered. Uh, next item is, uh, let's see. Sorry about that. I was looking for it. We already did that one. Uh, the next is the order upon the recommendation of the mayor and the finance committee. Uh, and this is uh, pursuant to Mass General Law Chapter 44A. The City Council hereby authorizes the City of Northampton to enter into uh, the following intermunicipal agreement for FY13. Uh, these are the one, two, three, four, five contracts that we just discussed in the Move to finance. approve. Move to approve. Second. Second. Um, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Um, and because of the fact that we are already now a month into FY13, I would ask for a second reading on this. Suspend, Suspend rule, rule 14. 13. Okay. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Move to second reading, please. Second. Okay. Councilor. Uh, now that I guess we're doing, the city's doing this a little differently from how we did it before, um, I'm curious, or hopeful, that rather, that. Uh, the finance committee will discuss these contracts more openly before they're completed. most definitely thank you yeah and i would only, i would note that many of these contracts were discussed by the council and the finance committee and they were talked about during the budget process it's just for whatever reason they weren't voted on formally by the council so as i remember discussing many of these as a counselor when we were talking about them in the financial context so so yeah but definitely we will do that and the contracts will be vetted and voted Okay, so this is on second reading. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, so this is approved on second reading. Uh, this is a second reading order that's coming back to you. Uh, this is upon the recommendation of the Transportation and Parking Commission. Um, uh, this is um, accepting the donation of a bicycle corral uh, valued at $2,700 from Craig De La Pena. Um, uh, to the City of Northampton Central Services Department in accordance with Mass General Law Chapter 44, Section 53A and a half. Move to approve. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Is there any further discussion on this? Okay. Hearing none. All those in favor on second reading say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. 
And this is the second reading. Uh, this is on the uh, section 31236, parking meter locations and regulations. Um, and this is again, uh, second reading, and this deals with the uh, various uh, permit parking. Um, and the would raise uh, to $45 a month uh, the monthly uh, long-term parking permits and for the monthly garage parking permits uh, they would be raised to $90 a month um, and so that is what this first one is on second reading. Move to approve. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Is there a discussion? Councilor. I just want to briefly point out that we had a comment, a public comment earlier today about the difficulty with parking close to downtown and uh, I I uh, do hope that um, the Transportation Parking Commission can convene a parking committee to deal with some of the issues of residents needing places to park when they do live downtown and, and uh, uh, making it possibly, you know, possibly more affordable for them. Um, you know, this uh, this pass, uh, the the, perm the parking pass that we have now are designed primarily for people who uh, use them. Uh, for work, uh, they I think they park in the long-term lots, uh, and some of them can't be parked in obviously uh, all year round because of snow emergencies and so on. So, uh, I hope that a parking committee can uh, work through some of these thorny issues. And uh, I think the parking passes are more about uh, allowing access for city workers and, uh, and some very few people who uh, who use them for uh, for uh, residential purposes. Thank you. I'm sure there's some elements out there. People, disabilities, and things such as that, parking as close as they can to their their places of residence. So, okay. um, any other comments on this? This is the one that you wanted to abstain from. Thank you. Okay. Um, uh, I know we were trying to keep them straight last time. So, um, all those in favor on second reading, say aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? Abstention. Okay. Abstains. Okay, so that has been approved on second reading. Um, the next item again on second reading, uh, this is uh, revising section 312.109, uh, and this is um, uh, on street uh, schedule uh, eight on street parking <laughs> meters, um, and it amends to establish uh, the following on street parking meter zones. Uh, these are on Bridge Street and on um, Elm Street uh, and on King Street and on Main Street and on New South Street. And it is uh, putting in place the proper classifications for 10 hour parking um, as well as uh, for the allowances of the permits that you just approved. Um, an attempt to clean up the ordinances so that the permits can be lawfully used in all those areas and that all of our 10 hour meter. Uh, spaces are properly delineated uh, in the ordinances. Move the second. Second. Can, can we connect 109 and 110? They're very similar. Oh, uh, certainly. Um, and, and so. Okay. Move as a group. Uh, uh, okay. So we'll move as a group. Um, second that. 312 110, um, which similarly uh, <coughs> is part of this overall look yes. at, at cleaning up some of these. Are, these are the off street parking areas. And again, um, one of the. Um, deficiencies we found in the, in the prior ordinances was that some of these places where uh, class 4a which you see are in bold did, uh, had not been delineated properly for use of the pass so this goes through and, and delineates those off street lots as well so the two kind of work together in conjunction with the, the previous one you just approved so on second reading is there any discussion of these yeah okay sure i, I just want to recognize all of the work and the hours that are spent on these parking related issues. This is, uh, and everybody that's, that's involved in it, you know, I just want to show my, express my appreciation. This is a lot of work. This is for the general public. They say, my God, you know, what's so difficult? It's very complicated. And uh, thank you for everybody that had anything to do with it. Okay. Any um, further discussion on this? All those in favor of approving uh, both of these ordinances on second reading, say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Uh, the next uh, are two for referral to committees. Um, 
these are both uh, sponsored by Council Owned Food and Daniels. Um, and they, uh, one concerns section 22 119 um, regarding the Northampton uh, Transportation and Parking Commission um, powers and duties. Um, and then the second is um, a revision to section 350 uh, 11.6 zoning approval criteria. Again, um, uh, having to do uh, with, uh, well, I don't know how to describe it, but it's it's uh, amending that section of the code and how zoning approval is obtained. Move so to these refer. need to be referred, and I d we didn't specify which committees, uh, so I will, Councilor. The ordinance? Uh, I move ordinance. to refer this to transportation, parking, and ordinance. Okay. Uh, the, the, um, the powers and duties one and the other one? Okay. Uh, yeah. Okay, well, I, I both. Speak briefly about it. Okay, I, the only thing I would say is that um, you may also consider Ed Lou for the land use one that applies to zoning as a possibility. But go ahead. Uh, just, I need a second. Oh, uh, is there a second to approve? Second. 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 Although it's still an open question where they're being referred. Let me, just, let me just say that uh, I think at minimum this should go to transportation and parking and to obviously to ordinance. Um, Typically, uh, discussions about zoning also go to the planning board and to Ed Loop. Uh, so, I, my um, motion could certainly be amended. The just briefly, just in a, as an explanation, um, traffic mitigation funds currently are uh, not accepted as they come in by the council, um, which is uh, actually contrary, so far as my understanding, after speaking with the city solicitors, contrary to state law. So. Uh, we need to write that, uh, and uh, this is an attempt to do that. Uh, but uh, the, the planning board or Ed Lou might have another way of doing it, so it's very possible to refer it to those. I would say just well. the planning board, actually, I now that you've heard it. So at least on this, the, the 350 six I would say to the planning board, transportation and parking and ordinance. So I amend my, am okay. I amend my. And then the other one, I think your transportation and ordinance would be fine. So, okay. So, um, I think I moved to refer just for originally. So, I'll, yeah, to those committees. Exactly. Just, just uh, mentioned. Yeah, as described. Okay. Any other comments on that? All those in favor of the referrals? No. Aye. 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 <laughs> Aye. I was answering a question. <laughs> Aye. She was asking me a question. I said no. I mean, you were all saying aye. So, sorry about that. Aye. Um, okay. So, just to clarify, One's going to transportation, parking, and ordinance. One's going to the same plus the planning board. Okay. Okay. So um, that completes all of the ordinances. We now have updates from the council president. Well, for the public at large, uh, that flurry of votes that you just witnessed with a lot of uh, suspension of rules for the second readings indicates that. There will not be a meeting that's scheduled for September 6th, and the reason for that is the Secretary of State, whose name has been invoked several times tonight, uh, made a recommend. It does make a general recommendation that during an election, that no public meetings be held because there could be a possible conflict for, for people wishing to vote. So we will not be having our regularly scheduled meeting on Thursday, September 6th. Um, also, please, counselors, find in your packet. Um, uh, a rather well-researched and considered uh, collection of recommendations rule of rule changes and rule modifications from uh, Councillor Adams um, that we will uh, that, or please review and consider when we go on to discuss within the, that ordinance committee meeting when we do do the rules review. But he's, he's obviously devoted a lot of time and it shouldn't end up in the recycling bin. <laughs> Uh, yes, when is it going to ordinance? When is what going to ordinance? Yeah. Oh, well, we, that's, that's for us to determine. And I think uh, given that the September 20th meeting is probably going to be pretty jam-packed, consequently, mm -hmm. because of uh, uh, the fact that we're going to not have a meeting on the 6th, I think it's appropriate in the interim for us to discuss and think about when we want to start that venture. And ordinance, right? It would go in or it would go to ordinances. I think the what was generally agreed that it, that's what ordinance does, and this is the appropriate place to discuss. Okay. When is it going? Oh, what, what am I missing? Consent. 
the poll petition. Oh God, yes. Oh God forbid. Well, it's because what would a city council meeting be without a poll petition? There will be a poll petition uh, scheduled for eight o'clock on the twentieth. The next council meeting is September twentieth. Councilor Kim Dennis, did you have a question for the council? Can I ask? Yeah. yeah. Um, when is the next ordinance? Uh, claims and uh, so on and so that forth. The second, second, uh, the 10th? second Monday of the month. So September 10th. September 10th. Won't that won't these be? I think the, the chair. Well, the, haven't been. They're they're not moved as an order, which is why they. Um, it, I had discussed this with Councilor Adams. They're not. They have not been represented as an order to be moved as an order. There's for our for our. You know, edification and for our discussion, but they're not—they're not actually official orders that are moved and require a vote out of council to be referred. So that um, e e they don't—I don't. From what I understand, they do not take a—they are going to be effectively on the agenda for that—that that meeting. Can't, can't any new business be brought to any committee? Sure. Well, I, I mean, that's not to say they can't—they're they, disallowed. I'm just saying that that uh, uh, my personal preference would be when we decide to do them in toto would be the most appropriate time to consider these. But if you know, if they want to be introduced as new business, um, that's up to the pleasure of, the, of that committee. I am. I don't presume any authority in that respect. So. Okay. So, is there any other? Uh, you're concluding your announcement. I am. Third, uh, Is there any uh, new business? Okay, hearing none, I would entertain a motion. To adjourn. Is there a second? All those in favor, say aye. Aye. Okay, the aye. Uh, aye. meeting is adjourned. <laughs>